This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use coupon code SOUTHGEEK for 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This Luca Parrott, and you are listening to Vacation and the Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. That's right. We're back. Comic Capers. Just for Lilith, we're doing a whole month of Captain America. <laughs> well, welcome back. Got a big one. I am Phil. Like I said, as always, joining me is Lilith Hellfire. Hey, y'all. Yeah, there she is. And not a, it's big, not because only we're starting this big Captain America run, but we're also joined by Big Charlie. Sorry, I'm sorry. Big I'm Morgan. excited. I'm so excited. I'm like D-Man. I'm like a little puppy. It's like, oh. yay! I get to play too. It's Jolly, the Professor Essa. And we got lots of feedback to play on this episode. So. Everyone's excited. That's right. Not as excited as Lil, of course. Because it's July and we're doing Captain America. Get it? Get it? <laughs> Actually, it's still June, Lilith. <laughs> we published these in July. Thanks for ruining the illusion, Charlie. <laughs> Wait, is this not going to go up for a month, Phil? No, July second. July is like a week, a week from now. <laughs> like a week, oh, like a, a week or two. Yeah, I'm... I don't know. I, 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 I don't know, know what day it is. I work from I, my castle now. <laughs> I all I know is that immediately Phil is posting like the YouTubes. And the videos, or they get the raw feed. So yeah. it's well, like, you know. subscribe to our YouTube, so you know. <sighs> Hence, guys. Hence. Although they should. I mean, we love they our should, because then they'd get this whole joke. And they'd know, oh, wow. Oh, see, we have that exclusive content. We're not one of the hoi polloi just waiting for Philip to deign them with the podcast. No, we're getting it live, fresh, raw. Feeling the emotions as they happen. <sighs> Heck, on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, you can watch these live. YouTube, you get them early, and then, they're, of course, they come to the podcast. There you go, man. People got to do that. I don't know why they don't. I don't know why they don't. But yeah, like I was, like I was saying the other day, I, I was going to promote these as like the or. Well, this first episode, we're doing Captain America three twenty seven through three thirty one, March through July nineteen eighty seven. I was going to. Uh, promote these as the origin of u.s agent you know coming soon to uh captain america uh, falcon winter soldier mm-hmm. but as charlie reminded me we also get like the origin of Battlestar, mm-hmm. some early d-man yes well t- and technically this isn't the origin because clearly cap has already had a run-in with super patriot prior to this yeah but i don't think they ever explained where it came from though no that is true that is true um but yeah but hey can we talk about uh or do you uh, do you want to do us first and then go to the tape? I don't, how do you do it here? Do you go to the tapes first? Do you sprinkle them throughout? Well, we'll, we'll cover each issue and then we'll play a feedback. Because like I said, Matt Kona sent a feedback for each each individual issue. And then Race put, sent for the whole thing. So then we'll play his at the end. So, so can we talk about these drugs that make you hyper adre- aggressive in the Marvel Universe? Because <laughs> they gave them to the Punisher. We know they gave them to uh, John Walker. And they're clearly giving them to Lamar in this whole thing. Um, Can we just call it PCP or yeah, it's something? On the nose? Are they yeah. doing? Are they doing drugs, or is that just the uh, augmentation process? Well, no, because you'll remember it comes out later. So, like, for so as with the Punisher, litter, well, actually, he was being drugged. That's why he was shooting litter bugs. Um, <laughs> you know, he wasn't. He's not really completely crazy. He's just hyper sane, like the Joker. Um, I wonder who did that first, like Punisher the Joker. But, uh, you know, was, no, he's just so sane. Everyone thinks he's crazy because mm-hmm. that doesn't sound crazy at all. Um, no, but they, they did the thing with, like, the Punisher when they wanted to, like, say, well, he's too popular to leave as just a crazy lunatic babbling on himself. So bring him back and say someone was drugging him. And then later, like, the very aggressive nature of John Walker gets explained that he was being pumped up by the Red Skull with drugs. Peace At least well. that's something that they say later. Sort of like how Bucky 
didn't really mean to kill all those people as the Winter Soldier. Yeah, and it I was mean, all mind control. And later on, John Walker gets a tragedy too, which kind of yeah. Well, he gets lots of tragedies, and of course, yeah. you know, uh, well, we don't we don't even want to get to what happens to the other two Buckies in this. <laughs> oh, that's a story that just like oh. Well, that was not at all redemptive for, for John Walker, was it? Um, <laughs> no. But that's not in this story. But and the, yeah, two, yeah. the two Hispanic, um, white Hispanic, though, uh, uh, other Buckies, I think they actually call themselves like right wing and left wing or something. It's it's weird. Yeah. Yes, left winger and right winger, yes. Yes. Um, but that's later. And then poor Lamar. And but Lamar is the one burning like you know, yelling at the foreigners, burning their lawns. Yeah, I know. Probably gonna work probably working for Gaddafi. Remember when Gaddafi was a threat? I see so you gotta remember this is like way before 9-11. This is when we were like best buds with Saddam. <laughs> you gotta go way back. This no, literally, we were like really we were tight with Saddam. Saddam and us, we were like, "Yeah, man, let's 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 build that let's build that gun to the moon. We're gonna do that with you." Uh, but Gaddafi, he was the bad guy. He's the guy who put the line of death. Remember the line of death? You crossed the line of death. He Gaddafi was gonna send kamikaze subs at you. I was there, man. But yeah, I, I I know you messaged me. You were you were uh, kind of upset at Lamar in the in the first, in the beginning of this issue. Yeah, he doesn't get much going on for him except for being like uh, apparently a horrible racist. Cause... Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just I mean, I, I'm guessing maybe not. I don't think any of them are pre- that educated because I think later on, after he gets the government job, Lamar like they send them for his GED and stuff. You know, he, he goes back to school for his GED and stuff. So I'm assuming uh, he didn't graduate high get school. Get enough or... diploma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Let me tell no. you. Especially you can go into college after you once you have that. You tr- oh, yeah. I actually know a lot of people that were of the idea, why don't I just drop out of high school because it's stupid, get my GED and go right to college. And yeah, like, yeah. You know, because cause everyone, cause a lot of people feel, you know, education. Yeah, our, our, the, the high school system is trash. I will totally agree with that. Well, actually, there's an entire theory that actually it's not in high school that's the problem. It's junior high. That junior high is where the, you just have kids spinning their wheels. And that, but, but, you know, see me, I'm a slow developer. So actually by the time I got through high school, I was actually kind of mature enough for college. In fact, it took me like an extra two years after, you know, when I, you know, did my Mr. Wizard tour and toured the world and all that kind of stuff. And then, then I was ready for college. Not everybody is. And then I stopped well, well, out of college. Well, that's why should embrace a gap year like Europe does, but that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so yeah, Lamar comes off very bad in this. Yeah, cause, but, I mean, yeah, because they're just like vandalizing the the uh, international house and yeah, torching the front lawn. Yeah, and what's and this reminds me of an episode that comes much later when Battlestar and Cap team up when Cap is still the captain. Yes, and they have this little exchange about you know you briefly held the name Bucky and. <laughs> Did you do honor to my fallen partner's name? He says, look, that wasn't really my choice. He said, no, just tell me, were you an honorable Bucky? Yeah, because was back when Bucky was still dead. And he's like, well, you know, I did my best. And yeah, and he says, that's good enough for me because Cap yeah. is super trusting. I'm just thinking, now he's just talking about when he was actually Bucky Bucky, not when he was one of the Buckies, the bold urban commandos. Oh, yeah. Hmm. By the way, can I just say how, 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 Shocking it is, it took Cap this long to realize that these guys were pro wrestlers with names like the Bold Urban Commandos. Honestly, I mean, I mean, in a world with superheroes and supervillains, I mean, you don't have to be, you know, that bold and you doesn't necessarily scream wrestler to be this bold and flashy. I guess, I guess, <laughs> I mean, I, yes, you are right, but also just, you know. When you have the unlimited wrestling um, federation, you know. Although I love, I well, we'll get to that because that's the next issue. So let's talk about this issue. So right now, 
but yeah, meanwhile, in the same campus, Steve Rogers is visiting Bernie. Uh, his well, he's about to find out his ex fiance. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't envelopes. We don't need that sound drop. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was gonna say that this was Bernie's choice. It's, it's the oh, fact oh. that you know. It look, you know, Cap. He's a loving guy, and you know, some. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Sometimes you need someone to say, you know what, I'm not right for you, and it breaks your heart. But I'm gonna tell you this. Years later, you go and say, you know what, you were right. You weren't right for me. That's all right. Yeah, but then she comes back later once get all back together, and then he's got a new girlfriend. Uh, which one? Which girlfriend did he have then? Uh, Diamond Carter. Back. What? Diamondback. Oh, Diamondback. Oh yeah. Well, Diamondback. she she's had a had a few, huh? She's a she's a bad guy. Don't be don't be like she's not the bad guy. She knows she's the bad guy. You know? Okay. She's the cat woman. It's like, it's like, wait, wait. You, you, you think Bruce is going to be saying, "I never realized, uh, Selena, that you were not a gasp virgin." You know, I mean. Well, Bruce, being Bruce, he totally has an incel mentality every now and then. So I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> no, well, uh, this is true too. This is true too. But we all know that Cat's been dogging it since the forties. So you know, <laughs> Cat's an understanding dude. You know, it's like, ah, oh, okay. By the time I dated this girl's sister. Uh, <laughs> totally not my fault you know they were hiding on me they didn't they weren't up front with stuff with me but yeah totally did did did, did her sister so whoa you know. hey cap said it not me man i know <laughs> but no yeah no they he, they hear about those fires and yeah cap's kind of like yeah it's kind of part of the reason i'm here and we used to hop in the back of that van get that motorcycle all uh red brown 70s uh charlie yeah there. all the way like only like a decade after he did it yeah buddy. <laughs> you know which is weird because it was it, i mean what i'll say is it was a cool idea when reb did it and then it's like well we can't use it just because reb's doing it but like i guess what it took is like 10 years later the guys who watched the captain america movie said no those actually weren't horrible this wasn't Batman and Robin. This was Red Brown Captain America. It was kind of cool. And so they brought in the, the van with the motorcycle. So I love that, um, obviously. But um, I want to go to this concert that has Tina Turner, Willie Nelson, Bruce Springsteen, and Prince. Was it a We Are the World concert? That sounds like a We Are the World concert. Well, this was like a We Are America concert. Because it's because first off, it's organized by the Red Skull because the Super Patriots emceeing, which is weird. And again, how did you not know this guy was a wrestler? <laughs> you telling me Hulk Hogan never made personal appearances? Come on. Well, Hulk, but Hulk Hogan's a wrestler. He's not actually the Hulk in the Marvel Universe. He's just yeah. Hulk Hogan. What if what if Hulk Hogan was the Hulk in the Marvel Universe? He was the popular. Oh God. Fan. Oh, Somewhere that, yeah. in some timeline, I'm telling you. It oh, there's a universe. There's a universe with the Green Hulk Hogan. Um, Hulk smash, brother. <laughs> yes. Um, and actually, Hulk Hogan is really, really tall. So he actually would have been a very good Hulk for the actual Hulk TV show if Lou Ferrigno was not such a great actor. But yeah, Hulk Hogan is still alive. Lou Ferrigno is still alive, too. Despite the steroid abuse, their hearts have done better than D-Man's. But, moving right along. Well, I mean, this was, like, the big thing of why they're using the Bucky Bucky identities, too, is because, you know, half these, uh, you know, a lot of these college kids think, you know, Cap's behind somehow behind all this. Yeah. Yeah. These college kids with their radical ideals... Getting too much education, that's what I says. Um, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, well, that because that's the whole debate between Bernie and her roommate. Um, yeah, I don't trust that dude. That dude is just total, oh, no, what? You don't want to sleep with me now kind of guy? And it's like, you know. Oh, Cap is totally going to be down with Reagan. It's like, dude, he was like, he, he's a New Deal Democrat. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, literally, he's a New Deal Democrat. Like, literally, 
That was his president. You know, he was the young upstart who voted for this radical guy named Roosevelt. <laughs> He's going to change things, man. I'm telling you, there's a new deal, dude. Well, well this, yeah, this, the risky, this roommate, yeah, you know what they say about them guys in mustaches, you know? Uh, well, you know. Not all mustaches, but yeah, all mustaches. (laughs) (laughs) Not all mustaches. But yeah, all mustaches. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't grow this for myself. Well, I do grow this for myself, but it's just so that it's it's a signaling mechanism, you know. Whoa. To let the world know that I, like Harry Mudd, am a, a, a person who likes to be noticed. Anyway, so oh lord, but yeah, I get those three panels of that you know bean counter in Washington. Hmm, who's this got a million dollars back pay? Steve Rogers. Hmm, let me look into this. You know, I would have appreciated this scene way more if they hadn't stole it from the Beverly Hillbillies. (laughs) Because this is literally an episode of the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, minus the Red Skull. Where where the 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 IRS guy comes and drive where they basically recap the Beverly Hillbillies origin. I think this is like the first episode of the series after they did like a pilot mm-hmm. movie or something. You know, like they did a pilot and or whatever they did, or they just remind people what the origins were. And um, you know, he says, "How can you tell me this man had no income his whole life, and then last year he has twenty five million? And it's like, well, actually, because he was paid in those newfangled dollars, the million dollars. Um, so, yeah. So, But aside from that, it's a delightful little gag. And I love the idea that, you know, auditors are just sitting there going over the paper audits instead of just waiting for a computer to kick something back. Um, although I guess the computer does kick it back to him, and that's how he notices it. But still, it it seems a little more hands on than the IRS I'm used to. <laughs> still waiting, IRS. Still waiting. Oh, and got that dang return, man. That's my car money, and I'm waiting for it. I need it before August when the dang uh, inspection sticker expires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done talking. I, I took I took a drink. It, it's time for you guys to talk. Take a uh-huh. drink. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. Meanwhile, yes. Cap and Bernie find out that Super Patriot is going to show up at uh, Americade eighty six. Amer- yeah, Amer- Americade. I think this is supposed to be like Farm Aid or Live Aid. Yeah. Well, but no, because I think it's like it's it it's like if yeah, it's Farm because Willie Nelson was a part of Farm Aid. And there's definitely that, you know, that red state roots kind of thing going on mm-hmm. here is, is the idea, which, you know, gee, that doesn't, like, echo it historically at all. Um, you know, except they had prints, and, you know. But then again, you know, Reagan was amazingly less controversial than Trump. Um, well, who isn't? Well, he was better at his job. You know, that's that's the thing. It's like... His, avi- uh, their, his Reagan's advisors were better at his job, you should say. His well, Reagan really, was that's a, what it counts. What it is is Reagan was an actor and could take direction. <laughs> you know that that's the ba- main difference. It's like Reagan was an actor, and someone said, "Okay, we want you to come from stage left and do this and do that." And Reagan was like, "Okay, yep, sounds like a good scene." And then Reagan would do the scene, and then it'd go back to his trailer. <laughs> and Trump, as a reality show star, said, "No, no, no, I'm gonna." Jazz it up. They'll fix We're it. We're gonna do it live. Right? We're gonna do it live. We're gonna do it live. It's like, no, we don't do this live. We have to be on. This is for a classic. This job clearly called for a classically trained actor, Mr. Trump. You can't do this if you're not a real actor. No. I'm not mad that he's a bad president. I'm mad that he's a bad actor. It offends me as an actor. <laughs> When that, see that's where you do the, the Seinfeld drop because that's a call back to Watley and he says and this offends you as a Jewish person this offends me as a comedian <laughs> I don't know what the actual jazz sound is there but anyway 
but yeah, so then the uh, Captain American Super Patriot fight. Yes, backstage at the concert. Yes. Because that wasn't as epic as I was thinking it was going to be. Well, it's just the a start, Lilith. It's just the start. Well, some it, stories start strong. I.e. Spider Man stories start strong. I'm just saying. Let um, me just I say. You listen to Ultimate Spider Cast, by the way. <laughs> how is it that nobody is like, dude, my car, my truck? Everybody dude. has insurance. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I don't know how you make money on insurance in the Marvel Universe. That's all I'm saying. You don't. That's and and for what it's worth, it's like, oh, dude, you're in the Midwest. Your insurance rates are low. Oh, no, Super Patriot walked in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, and actuarial tables everywhere going, no! And, how, and I, I mean, yes, the insurance companies can't be making any money because anytime anyone like really bangs up their car, you can just be like, oh, yeah, Thor hit it. <laughs> <laughs> the store. Well, no, they actually do it. Off. There's a whole thing about that, actually. Oh no. Actually, this is actually no, because they did a thing about it in um oh, was it Secret Invasion? It was one of them. One one of the things. And it was a a um a cabbie talking about Spider Man destroying his uh cab. And it's like, yeah, you know, you get smashed by the Fantastic Four or the Avengers. <laughs> There's like an address you can reach out to, and they usually make good. But you know, you get smashed by Spider Man. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, back in the day, all the Avengers were just like, yeah, yeah, send the Tony Stark, send the Bill of Tony Stark. Well, no, but they had an address. There was an there was an Avengers yeah. mansion. There was a you know Forest Freedom Plaza or a Baxter Building. There was a place. Oh yeah. Where, when the, so when the thing crushes up that car and tosses it, and they get sued for that later, that guy got his money back. Yeah, the thing was hot tempered, but you know, probably got a better cab than he had before. You know, <laughs> the fact that the guy probably had a lot of underlying issues with his own emotional state that made it difficult. Because I'm sure Reed was there the next day. He's like, "Dude, I'm sorry, Reed. I'm sorry, Ben did that. Here is buy yourself two cabs, okay? Here's some here's some acne medication. Never have acne again. <laughs> oh, he sold that one like." He keeps on selling the cure for acne. I don't know. I think he's actually inventing super acne in his lab on occasion. Just I should put a little 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 super acne out there that my medication, my old medication doesn't work on anymore. Make sure I'm staying ahead of the game. But I mean, well, how can you say this isn't like an epic fight? I mean, like we were just saying property damage. I mean, it's, I'm just, it's not as impressive as I was expecting. That's all that I'm saying. I mean, Cap's punching the guy. He's like, man, it's like punching a brick wall. Yeah, and, I, and I've like, just never been one for Captain America action, I think. I just don't think they capture it very well. It's not, I don't know. It's just something about it. It's not as fluid or dynamic as, like, say, Spider Man or well, other no. things that I read. As you this story goes on, I think it gets better. And I mean, and that they really change artists. And it's like, well, if I'll, I'll put it to you this way I think this is kind of like Captain America's Nightfall, except they, they like break his spirit instead of his back. And that's worse. That's the worst yeah. thing you can do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but they don't really break his spirit. Because oh, he's kind of down for a while when, like, when he first has to quit, as we'll get to next episode. Oh, well, no, he, he's having an okay. existential crisis, as you do, you know. Yeah, that's I mean, as no, you should. It's healthy to have those spirit. every now and then. The the reality is, is that because he gets, you know, as we see in the next issue when we go there, and actually, I think it's the third issue when we go there. It's like he says, "Well, you know, if you want, I could. Yeah, you know, I'd love to see what we could do if we could put some extra muscles on you." You know, because uh, Malice yeah. is like, "Wow, you've got, you've got." As as the leader says to uh, Blonsky, "I think you've got something in you already. If I give you this, it might make you into an abomination." And <laughs> uh, you know, just to be winky winky. But you know, Malice is like, "No, nah, sounds fun." <laughs> you know, Malice Malice does not have the scientific ethics of the leader, and that is something I think we should all take away from this. You know. <laughs> Malice is like, yep, don't even care about informed consent. Okay. Don't even yes. care. But yeah, so and that's how we get Jessica Joneses. <laughs> but yeah, they basically fight and destroy this parking lot for like a half an hour and then Super, <laughs> Patriots, Super Patriots basically like, oh no, I hear Springsteen, so we're gonna go. <laughs> anyway, yeah. here's Conway Twitty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to have my family guy jokes. I have to. No, it's... I got that reference. <laughs> yes. Uh, who doesn't like Conway Twitty? 
Uh, that's actually a hee haw reference. So there uh, you go, hee haw. But yeah, Cap's like, you know, did I lose? He's like, no, it's a draw. He gave up. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm honestly, I gotta say, I think like you know, it's <laughs> this is the problem with protagonist armor. It fails when the writer doesn't want you to have it. Because later we'll see Cap freaking Supermaning chains when he's tied up with a Maricop. And he just like bursts out of the chains because he's just that jacked as Captain America. He had his buckwheat pancakes. It was fine. (laughs) fine. Aunt May's wheat cakes, man. Charged by Mephisto. Um, Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, the issue just basically ends with, yeah, Bernie thinking, oh, I guess this isn't a good time to tell him the engagement's off. And, you know, the bean counter again. <laughs> oh, he's not doing anything weird. He's just, he's having fun nerding. It's like, oh, okay, this guy was this guy. And, oh, he's one know. of those uh, counting nerds. Okay. He's an accounting nerd. Uh, this mm-hmm. nothing... Man, you need those guys. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, well, and at least he's using his, I mean, he oh, wants to use his powers for good. Mm. He's not like he's an Enron accounting nerd. Those guys were evil nerd. Those were evil nerds. He was a good nerd trying to do good for the good for the government. You know, just making sure nobody was hiding their income. You know, he's a good nerd. He wants he wants to do right, and he even feels bad when he like realizes like, oh man, did I like screw up somebody's life with this? But that's that's litter issues. But yeah, so Cap doesn't beat Super can't beat Super Patriot up because not every fight should be, be beating a guy up. And as he says, you know, I'm a way better fighter than this dude, but he is really strong. Be gentle with me. You know, it's like you know, it's it's like the Hulk. The Hulk. I don't even remember that drop. <laughs> oh, then you definitely don't remember this. The Hulk's always hard. <laughs> But what can I say? I am such a pickle, pickle. Pickle, pickle. That I do remember. Okay. Uh, so I know. Hey, you want to hear Matt Kona's thoughts on this issue? Sure. Hey, Matt Kona, what happened in this issue? Hi, Phil and Lilith. Good to be here. Peter Here's no my here. six-part feedback. I think the, I like the first issue, maybe three twenty-seven of Captain America. Maybe the most, because it was so odd, and also it happens to have some ringings of truth in today's world, which is good or bad, but uh, good to talk about, bad to be reminded about, we'll say. So we see Lamar and Hector, two Captain America impersonators, bullying Middle Easterners using a combination of racism and Ben Gring slang, like ever loving. And I love that the, they misspelled their... Lawn burnings, these bold urban commandos called Buckies, which probably annoyed Captain America even more. Maybe that's why he's on the investigation. And they, I love villains, superheroes that travel by limo, like Super Patriot, drinking a beer with this uh, SS. Where is the with the Hydra logo on her hat? But, I don't know. I call that. Various organizations that kind of go through this. Uh, this big arc of issues. I love seeing Steve Rogers That's being referred to as a comic book artist, and he meets his, his I guess, fiance Bernie. Steve Rogers is a Bernie bro at her campus. <laughs> He's there for law school in Wisconsin. Maybe a young Quasar is hanging out somewhere in the background. Yeah, and uh, her roommate asks if they want to go check out the lawn burnings and Steve says, go ahead. Yeah, he'll hang back, but he's kind of there, not just to see his fiance who's having second thoughts, but also to investigate it, but doesn't want to arouse Paul's suspicion. And then Paul compares Cap- or Steve's body to a Russian. What? Come on. That's all red blooded American there. Love seeing Cap on the motorcycle. Shows up to the international house, which has been defaced and, and uh, he gets confused from because the people that ruined it were wearing Captain America masks, so they knock over his motorcycle. The police are reluctant to let him investigate. I know it's rare that they have Midwestern superheroes around. And then they, uh, 
one of my favorite moments is when Paul invites Steve to watch him debate his fiance Bernie about whether or not Captain America voted for Ronald Reagan. Uh, I'm going to say Cap voted for Dukakis. I think that uh, actually, I think this might have been pre Dukakis. So uh, Mondale, maybe not. Maybe he did vote for Reagan. This would have been Mondale. Um, well, this was 19. 19- before Cap got frozen. This was 86, so it was Dukakis. Things get stranger. We find out that Super Super Patriot is going to the America Aid concert. Steve says he'll get his hotline boys to get him some tips. And then meanwhile, we find out that Cap is having, or Steve Rogers is having some problems with the IRS. Back to the concert. There's no talking heads there. That causes a lot of controversy. Super I want to go to this concert so bad. Before the Heartbreakers, I assume they didn't want to put Tom Petty's name in there. It's kind of odd. They put <laughs> Springsteen's later. But and he intends to rap. Okay. Cap uses his Avengers idea as a backstage pass to get to talk to Super Patriot. There's some great zinging, as you know, that I like. Grandpa America. And he says that Cap should be at a Lawrence Welk concert. Ooh. And it, it's pretty good. Then, and then Super Patriot says that he'll confess to anything Cap wants him to if he beats him in battle. And then he immediately goes to sucker punch him after Cap walks away. <laughs> they fight for exactly 27 minutes before Supes tosses him down some stairs. Uh, so, excuse me, tosses some stars into Cap's chest after they've wrecked a couple of cars in the parking lot. And then he uh, he goes back to Bernie, feeling kind of deflated about not winning the fight. She considers whether to drop the news that she also doesn't want to marry him. And then mm. it finishes off with some tax trouble. So I, I kind of like it was Cap out of... Classic 80s you know, situations? Trusted 80 sitcom. and all that. But overall, not a bad way to start the uh, arc. Okay, so that's my feedback on that one. Hey, yo. Hey, all. Got right. a boom tiss in sight. Proud of you, Matt. <laughs> and there it goes. I know, man. Yeah. What the F? What the F? <laughs> <sighs> what the Faulkner? Whoa. All right, so should we Sound get the fury, man? All right, that one was Matt Kona's favorite issue. Should we get the Charlie Esser's favorite issue? Ooh. Let's talk about the greatness that is D-Man. Or the the lovable he and Lockjaw need to do more together because they realize they're both puppies. They're both these big brown eyed puppies who just want to be loved. Oh, oh my. I still say Lockjaw can talk. I don't care what anyone says. It's hard for him. He can't do it often. He doesn't do it often. He's not going to do it just to show that he can talk. He's only going to do it for Quicksilver because he wants Quicksilver to know, dude, you're messing with people's lives. Are we talking about... He's the Maggie? (laughs) He's the Maggie Simpson. He's the Maggie Simpson. He can talk. He just doesn't want to. I was going to say, hard to talk and messing with people's lives. Are we talking about Trump? No, Trump please leave our president constantly. alone. He's going through a lot right now. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> He's not going through enough. Oh, anyway, I'm, I'm, uh, we won't. Let's not get political right now. Okay, okay, In the story about Captain Even America, we're talking about Captain an America, a, an <laughs> apolitical hero. I was gonna say, let's keep let's keep Charlie in a good mood. D man, D man, <laughs> yay! You know, that oh. sounds like a character that should be my favorite character, but yet somehow. <laughs> You know, let me tell you what I love about this. If only he had a 69 on his chest. <laughs> there we go. Well, you know. It's because of Daredevil, who's one of his he's one of his favorite superheroes. He's just he's like he's like a pre-Phil Coulson. He's like a buff Phil Coulson. He's Ooh. all about he's just a big superhero nerd. And he just was like he was like, oh, that's so cool. You're like all the which is also kind of probably why. Like Ben was like he was like cool with him, but he was like, dude, not not for nothing, uh, 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 you know, Dennis. But you're kind of really obsessed with the fact that I was a superhero, and I get that that's a big thing, and I know, but 
It's like, dude, I'm like a whole man. I have a whole life. Not all about punching Doctor Doom. You know, I like the Mets. I'm a Mets fan. If most people don't know that about me, they think I'm a, uh, a Yankees fan. I'm not. I'm totally about the Mets. And um, Mets, Mets, and Jets. Dang straight. You know, man, it's, it's, uh, yeah, but uh, Cap comes to the gym of the Unlimited Class Wrestling Federation. Everyone assumes. He must be like a new guy who's going to be a wrestler. And they're like, yes. dude, you can't use that costume. There's already a Captain America. And they don't believe him, no matter how much he says, oh, I'm the real Captain America. And they just like start attacking. <laughs> well, you know, it's, they're, they're kind of they're, they're professional to, wrestlers. and the stinkers. Well, well, no, what I will say, and this is actually kind of the point that they make is like, man, I thought he'd be bigger, <laughs> you know? Which is a running gag in this whole storyline, which is like, yeah. oh, Cap has the very first version of this great augmentation thing. And then that was like, you know, this was 1940s technology at its finest. It's like, these are the smallest vacuum tubes ever made. And, you know, it is it is just like, oh, okay, yeah. Um, and yeah. he is... Very outclassed by all of the modern heroes, and that's what that's what because you know, spoilers for the future, kids. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. The Red Skull is pulling the strings, pulling the strings. Well, it's a cap story, so naturally, well, <laughs> exactly. at point, everyone thought he was dead, he died in died in 300 yeah you never and, believe that you i never know. believe yeah that. and joker died in batman number one so you i know, know. <laughs> but it's like, but the thing you know is is like they really don't even like hint that there's like a mastermind behind this until like what is it like 345 or something maybe yeah but you know what i'll say is if you go retrospectively mm -hmm. it's pretty obvious oh yeah yeah it's pretty obvious like oh Actually, but, I mean, means... they're not so obvious that they come out and say, oh, hey, there's a secret, you know. I'm well, like, what I'll tell you is the minute that lieutenant shows up mm. in Malice's lab, and like, why is a guy who's being called the lieutenant here? I didn't even realize that he was, I, I had actually forgotten about his betrayal of freaking, um, um, why am I? Uh, Sharon Ventura. Sharon, Sharon Ventura, yeah. Carol Danvers kept jumping in my head. It's like, that's not you. You're not Ms. Marvel. You're Captain Marvel. Be there. Um, no, Sharon Ventura, that, um, you know, I even forgotten about him in that story. And uh, the entire idea of the lieutenant being there, right there, that is your big red flag that, oh, this goes deeper. And then when we get the government conspiracy in this, in these issues, basically, if you didn't realize, and I think a few episodes later, we are going to see Del Rusk. And Del Rusk is like, oh, okay. You know, and granted, Del Rusk is a brilliant, brilliant uh, way to hide your identity because you don't think people are actually going to use an anagram of their supervillain name. If he had just been John Smith, no one would have questioned it. That's right. And, you know, oh, actually, probably if he was John Smith, everyone would have questioned it because, or, you know. I mean, just, 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 just you know. He could have been Mormon. This is true, too. Just the body he was uh, inhabiting, you could call, he could have called himself Roger Stevens. <laughs> well, except Steve uses that all the time. He does it again in this, in Not this, it, or is it this? Is, no, this is this issue that he uses the Roger Stevens. Oh yeah, when he goes for ice cream, yeah, yeah. He says, That's oh, no right, matches Mr. Malone. Stevens. Or <laughs> yes, well you know. Um, Oh, but Charlie, you had to have loved this, you know, because not only is it D-Man who breaks up the fight, but he says, "I know how to tell if this is the real Cap." Hey, Cap, where did you first meet Ben Grimm? <laughs> and what's funny about that is that's not. The answer that would be like mysterious because the the comic books are published in this universe. Yeah. So you would know that Cap and Ben Grimm had met when the Avengers and the Fantastic Four both fought the Hulk. So 
It's not like, oh, uh, no, actually, we had, you know, met at Cat Delicatessen two weeks before because, you know, Cap loves him some pastrami. And <laughs> that would have been an interesting, that would have been a really interesting way to, to, to phrase that. But, you know, I didn't write this book. And it's just, you know, but it is something that really anyone, anyone would probably know. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. that is the official answer. The official answer is they met. They, they, and that is when in comic book continuity, they first met. But, you know, it's entirely possible that, you know, like I said, they met at, uh, you know, they met at Clancy's bar, you know, <laughs> they met at Archie's place. So, yeah, so, yeah, D-Man tells them, yeah, this is the real Cap, and then he asks them why he's there, and, you know, Cap tells him he's looking for a lead on Super Patriot, and then D-Man's like, hey, why don't we jump in the shower? Yeah, and at this point, I realized that the later reveal that D-Man is gay, really, it, again, it was there all along. <laughs> it really was. This is, this is, yeah. this is just who D-Man is, and it's fine. And he's 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 out and he's proud, and I love D Man for this. And um, yeah, you know him and Captain are gonna shower together, you know, as you do. That gives him the his origin while they're showering. Yeah, as you do, and uh, you know, I like that he's you know was a football star who'd never really you know. Although it seems like he did do college. I mean, he went to college, right? Because it seems like he was a college football player. I believe so, yeah. Because he goes to the – I don't think the NFL will recruit out of high school. For numerous reasons, you don't want to recruit out of high school for the NFL because you do want people to be at a older state where they're more – No, it's just free college. training. That's all that's really about. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, says, but, yeah, he says well, back in college, I was just another normal All-American redneck. Yeah. Cop. Yeah. Yeah, and and I liked that. I liked that. You know, and he has his beard on his shoulder, the cheerleader. So that's nice. <laughs> uh, and yet he says, "Hey, Cap, you want to take a shower?" Um, <laughs> you know, because let's just see how super the soldier is. Um, Whoa! Although, as uh, as Miss Ferrari will tell you, yeah, peak. Peak human human levels. Um, so they uh, have a nice shower. He tells them about how he became, you know, he wanted to go pro, but he realized now he's too strong to play pro. So what's he going to do? So he goes back to the power broker. Power broker says, oh, yeah. Well, why don't you go? Also, it's weird that, like, the power broker does all this on spec. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, but he also has those drugs supposedly that like stabilizes their condition, and if they don't come back from the drugs, they start going into withdrawals. Yeah. What is this, the boys? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It, it is exactly that. Although it's a weird question in the boys if the um, serum V actually needs to be taken to maintain powers, or if it just gives them the boost. Because it seems like the illegal v, uh, Serum V trade in the boys is not Vite approved. You know. Or maybe it is, and it's just a secondary stream. Well, we do know that, of course, in the at least in the TV version, that that was all the Homelander's plan to create supervillains. Because how is he keep, going to keep a job if there's no real supervillains? Because that's practical. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. D-Man saying about how, you know, he's buddies with Ben Grimm. And... Oh, yes. And, you know, you know, Cap, I know how busy you got you superhero types are. I know how hard it is to keep track with us little people. Gee, it'd be sure nice. It'd be sure nice if if if, if you if, if you needed a, a a guy to help you out. Hey, I, I know this power broker guy. Maybe I could help you out. You know, I got a costume. I got a costume, Steve. I got a costume. Can I wear my costume? Would you like to see my costume? I'll shave my head for you. Like my costume? I'll shave my head for you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Uh, Cause he's too famous to be seen with his mohawk. You have to understand. <laughs> oh gosh, that is just like he is just a little. He's a big brown puppy dog. Oh yeah, because Cap's like, don't you have professional commitments? I could cancel him, no problem. 
Exactly. Gab was like, really don't want to have the situation, but like, D man, he just pulls you in. It's like I'm, I'm starting to understand why Cap just like, oh yeah, D man, I remember working with him. Kind of also kind of feeling a little, little of Ben Grimm stuff now too. It's like, oh okay, maybe I totally misjudged these guys. Where it's like, yeah, D's a little needy. He's a needy guy. Which is sad, because in his own right, he should be his own hero. Oh, yeah. And so Cap says we'll meet him tonight. Oh, yeah, the, the van will be blue tonight, because it does change colors. Ooh, fancy. fancy. Because when he got this van to travel the country, you know what that is. Wakandan tech. Wakandan, it's the best tech there is. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, anyway. We- then more tax stuff in Washington D.C. <laughs> yeah, well, you, it's 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 a plot line they're going to deal. Oh yeah, you know it's, because it's, yeah, they're sending people out to try to find Cap. I think. Yeah, well, they are because they want to talk to him about this whole superhero thing. You know. Oh yeah, they yeah, will talk to him next issue. Yeah, I mean next episode. Yeah, next episode, Captain America, no more. Oh Lord, but then the meetup. Hey, hey, Cap, I look so different without my mohawk, huh? Huh? He really, he is. Tell just... him he looks nice, for the love of God. You look pretty, Dennis. Come on. Yeah, exactly. He just wants to know he's, he wants to know he's a part of the team. He wants to know he's beloved. I'm sorry, he's Pat Dugan. This is Pat Dugan. <laughs> I'm not a fancy man. I don't know who Pat Dugan is, but okay. Stargirl, Pat? Oh, that guy. You mean Stripe. S-T-R-I-P. Stripe. Luke, Luke Wilson, yeah. Luke Wilson, okay, yes. Yeah, well, see, he see, he doesn't, he was that to Starman, not necessarily to Stargirl. So that's a, that, that, that. Not yet. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about all that on Capes and Lunatics, because. Oh, yeah. I got notes and, and quotes. I'm not sure about it. Um. <laughs> But yeah, scroll scroll up because that comes out after this, I think. Uh-huh. So yeah, so what's your? <laughs> so they're talking in the van, and I uh, yeah, cap check with the West Coast Avengers. Oh, another name of interest to Charlie Esser. All I got is Doctor Carl Malice. Dr. Carl Malice. What? Which? Cap I mean, with a name like that, you're just with. begging for your kid to be evil. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, Malice is a family name, and it's U.S. You know, I'm German. Well, I'm guessing it is, you know, Carl's a German name, generally speaking. And, you know, and they tried to, like, all hippy-dippy him in the Jessica Jones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't even. Yeah. Don't no. even. Don't, don't say, no, man, I'm doing, like, the balance of the universe Thanos stuff now. So it's like, eh, no, you? you're not. You're not. You're, you're a sociopathic scientist who experiments on human beings, so. Homeless people? Uh, no, no, that no, that you had to be punchline for. Uh. No, we can discuss that. <laughs> Art of the face, man. Oh, jeez, that's all I want. Every issue, it's just. Uh, just because yeah. you're a lady, don't mean you're not punchable. I mean, you ain't a tramp. <laughs> I'm just saying. You can be yes, punchable. I, we'll get a lady to punch you, but you're still punchable. That's the comics code. Speaking That's of- why we got female supervillains to start with. Ladies needed to punch people, and they were like, oh, I'll punch this person. Speaking of fancy showboats, D-Man shows Cap his new costume. They're checking Malice's last lab. And then Cap recapping, get it? Cap recapping like the last issue and stuff. And- I do like the the idea of the the like leg work of superheroism. Yes, which is something you you never you never see. It's like okay, yeah, no, this lab was 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 a dud, but let's see, let's look for clues. Let's do some detective work like they do over in Batman from time to time. And- well, this was yeah. this was Grunwald's writing. He was always methodical. It's always you know it, there was. Hardly ever was it just like, oh yeah, we always luck into it the first time. <laughs> and then it's D Man who's like, hey, you know, I went out because I'm doing this now with you, so I went out and hung out at at the Roy Gym 
to say, hey, anyone got any good roids? And they're like, hey, do you want some super roids? Here's a business card for the guy you're looking for. At How Lee's Karate Academy? How Lee's, man. Well, yeah. Because everyone knows Kung Fu is the ultimate superpower, but some people don't want to... Some people are Ed Grubermans. Okay? <laughs> they don't want to walk the path of Taekwondo Leap. They want to they wanna boot people in the head now. And if you want to boot people in the head now, you know, you're going to need a little help. So you, so it's like the guy goes to Hao Lee's, you know, Kung Fu Academy to become a Kung Fu master and be better than the best. But they're like, oh, wait, this is going to take a lifetime of study and commitment? No, I want a shortcut. So, oh, well, this, this is the guy with the shortcuts. So there you go. Do you want to be the best around? You want nothing to keep you down? Yeah. You know, yes, I do, but not like if it's like gonna oh, interfere yeah. with my lunch schedule. You know? <laughs> I was gonna eat tacos at two, so I want to eat tacos and Ooh. be amazingly super powerful. Can you do both? Well, no, not under the masterful way of kung fu, which will make you the greatest champion that ever was. It's like, no, 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 I don't want to be that. I just want to beat people up. I don't beat people who don't know kung fu. It's like, oh, well, if you do want to beat people up who don't kung fu, here's steroids. And that's that's how the power master makes his money. So um, yeah. Um some are, some aren't. That's to Tristan's question of whether or not steroids were illegal. Oh. You want to be doctor prescribed. Yes. But so I guess the power like Dr. Malice, happy to prescribe. Yes, I guess Malice is working on the back of an ice cream parlor. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you always need a front. Yeah. But I gotta say, that's a really high traffic front. You know what, ice cream parlor? Although there is, like, a place that's called um, Gabby's, you know, Italian Ices and Hot Dogs that's never open mm -hmm. in Newark. That's like, if it's never open, I get it. But if you like, just have it, you walk in and have to say the secret order. Yeah. Like, how many people come in and just make the secret order just because that's what they want? And they get, oh, okay. What's well, oh, come on to the back. It's like, Why? Just come to the back. It's like, oh, what superheroes? What? I went in for ice cream and I came out with muscles. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that is a that is a Marvel Comics origin waiting to happen. Man, you imagine if someone just accidentally walked into the antique shop and gave the code word to that lady oh. in 1940? So, like, oh, I guess you're the guy who's being the new Captain America, huh? What? Yes, Whoa. Yeah, because the guy goes into like a peanut butter and praline mint sundae, and the guy's like, was it cherry? No, sprinkles. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, they don't show it. I, you don't. They don't show it. But I would think you would have to give the password and show that business card that D Man got handed. Eh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Although you know, that's what I'm going to say. It's like randomness is random, so I it's doubt. entirely possible that yes, you you got the business card, you went in, you just really wanted, and yes, I get whether like the mint and the praline. Don't sound like they go together, but just because it doesn't sound like it goes together doesn't mean it doesn't. Maybe they just pick like the rarest thing that people usually order, and they're like, "Okay, that's the password." Well, actually, pralines are common. Mint is common. The combination is what's odd. That's what I'm saying. The combination you got to get that. But combination because both are right. common, it's likely people are going to do it. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's likely. You know, I wonder if they got it. I wonder if he's like sizing up the people too. It's like if a six year old comes in and orders that, they're like, Yeah, no, he ain't coming here for no strength augmentation. Yeah, but you know, but you know what? If a big fat guy comes in, oh, if I come in, say, Yeah, I'm, you know what I'd love, <laughs> I'd love like some pralines and like a mint Sunday. You if know, you love wrestling, sir. Well, do I? <laughs> Oh, I you no, know I do. Like, oh, uh, you want to cherry on that? No, I, uh, sprinkles, sprinkles. Because, you know, sprinkles, it's all over. The cherry, it's just one cherry. But the sprinkles, yeah, give me the sprinkles. <laughs> and that's how I became a superhero. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. Yes, yeah. He walks down this hall and gets scanned. And then he comes 
to a guy. Oh, look, there are there four lights. <laughs> are there four lights? Yeah, I gotta tell you, I got a feeling that there was like some thought they wanted to make Charles Xavier the power broker in this because he never gets up. He's bald. Well, it's a dummy. Yeah, I, well, yeah, that's the thing. But you, but then no, because they also show him like at the machine, and he's still bald and sitting in a chair and working the machine. So maybe he's an animatronic. I don't know, but um, yeah, that uh, that's a thing. But, um, but I mean, he's asking him about the you know well, why do you want the strength augmentation process and blah blah blah. And, and I love the lie detector saying, "Oh, it's." Nine point five that he's lying. It's seven point yeah. eight. You know, truth probability index. Yeah, yeah. So he, he kind of has to give him a version of the truth. It's like, yeah, that super that super patriot made a chump of me, man. I want to get back at him. Which is yeah, sort of true. Ooh. True enough for a true, as they say. Anyway, yeah. So, all right. Lilith, yeah. Lilith, Lilith may be back uh, soon. She said the power, power grid down there is being a little wonky. It's all those dang armadillos, man. Armadillos and toads. And it's like COVID toads now. So God knows what they're doing. Well, thank God Charlie Esther's here. <laughs> well, goodness, thank you. That's why I came. Um, so, yeah. So, hey, okay. anyone else have anything to say about this episode? Oh, yeah, Matt. I told you Matt sent some forever. for the Yes, episode. I know. That's why I'm transitioning to that. Okay. I'm Oh, well, yeah, you, I'm running out of thoughts, Phil. So come on. Whoa, you want to skip the you want to skip the rest of the issue where like yeah, Steve rushes them. He kind of gets taken prisoner, and who has to run to his rescue, Charlie? Well, D Man runs kill. to his rescue, and they split up, which gives Cap the time. So it's it's one of these things where it's like he's running to his rescue, but he's also kind of like just punching people, mm -hmm. um, you know, to the point where it's again. And again, this idea that he's a professional wrestler, he actually does should know how to fight. Although one can make the argument that a professional wrestler doesn't necessarily know how to fight, just how to look like to fight. Yes. It's like, you know, if you're fighting a stuntman, yes, the stuntman knows how to roll with a punch, so you can't really hurt him, but he doesn't necessarily know how to land a punch in a in, in a certain way. He can make yeah. a punch look good, but he actually knows how to make a punch look good without actually hurting someone. So that's your problem with being a professional wrestler in a fight. You know, it's it's a little harder and a little different. Whereas Cap is, you know, always fighting for his life like Conan and jumps around and you know uses all of his uses his smarts and his elements of surprise and all his strategery to gain the advantage. And then when they split up, you know, and of course throughout the whole thing, all like, oh, maybe I should think about upgrading, you know? Well, Which yeah, because because like Malice was like kind of started augmenting Steve and then he's like, why would you do that? And Malice is like, oh, I wanted to see if I can make your muscles explode or whatever. You know, if, you, if someone gets left under there long enough, their muscles will explode. Which is just a weird thing to want to find out. I mean, unless it's I was like saying, hey, if I put the ants into the magnifying glass, what happens next? I mean, unless it's not for you know scientific purposes, quote unquote. It's like you know how 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 you know how long and how far can I augment someone minutes. before they die? Please put the toy down. Yeah, sorry, Tristan's cooking food, so I have to advise and consent and yes, tell him not to be watching YouTube while he's doing it because yeah, okay, it ends okay. poorly. So yeah, so basically the whole thing is Steve was Steve was debating, you know, should I, you know, because D Man's like, I'll force him to complete the treatment, you know, if you want super strength, I'll do, you know. Yeah, well, and that's D Man. That's D Man being D Man. We could be so much alike, Steve. <laughs> yes. Um, he just wants to be Steve's best friend. He wants the job. He there's a sidekick oh, yeah. opening, and you know, Cap is like, okay, you know, um. Yeah, I mean it's it it's 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 this whole round of issues. You know, like I said, D Man does not come off at his best, but he also no. comes off as as a guy with the heart of a champion. He wants to be a hero, and, and Cap is full of self doubt about the fact that uh, that he is you know state of the art nineteen forties technology. He's having he's having a lot of toaster issues where he's feeling like, oh man, am I the absolute model? Yeah. Maybe all these new fancy appliances are what the master wants, and I am just, you know, I should be tossed in the trash bin of history. 
maybe I should just retire and, you know, me and Peggy run off because she's around at this point. Or me and Bernie. What the heck? Run mm. off with Bernie. Be with Bernie. Have some super kids. It'll be great. I'm giving it up. Man. Yeah, it's a young man's game. And I'm like 97 at this point. So, yeah. you know, let's be honest here. So, yeah, uh, I would have loved more of that in this whole thing with him actually debating. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe I should really just give up being a Captain America. I mean, honestly, there's lots of people around. Although I think that really this is what kind of hurts it is that Super Patriot is such a bad Captain America. Yeah. And oh, know oh, we'll find that out. Bad. Mm-hmm. We know that Super Patriot is bad at this point, that he's like, I can't stop doing this because someone else will, you know, because Roscoe might have been a good guy to be Captain America, but the guys that would take it up next will be bad at the job. Yeah. Because they're going to be Reagan Captain Americas. And we know that's not good. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's, all right. Let's get some Mac Kona feedback in here. Yes. I know there's going to be a Baskin Robbins joke in here. Okay, Cap 328. I appreciate what they did with the cover. D-Man is on it, and they kind of reference the fact that he's easily confused with early Daredevil and Wolverine, which he'll go to explain later. Now they're back in L.A. Or they, Cap is back in L.A. He visits the workout room for Unlimited Class Wrestling Federation, the UCWF for short, and he is... There, so we've got. I don't know how much time has passed from the previous issue, but we soon learn that he's sort of picking up on where that storyline left off. Uh, the wrestlers there don't believe it's really him, but they decide to verify that fact by attacking him. I like the wrestlers' names Ice Pick, Red Zeppelin, and then Steamroller. Some of them are less uh, impressive. Jersey, okay. And a big red mohawk guy named he's a, the Jersey Devil. Devil. That's why he's from Jersey. Breaks it up and determines if it's the real cat by asking. He actually was champion, I believe, after um, the UC wrestler Ben Grimm. He was fighting with the Hulk in the Avengers back in the Fantastic Four number 26. The Fantastic Four were fighting all the two. Uh, they kind of let off some steam by going into a steam room and they learn about the steroid treatment from this guy called the Power Breaker. Okay. It's a six hour long procedure, which gives you a hundred times strength. And D Man originally wanted to use that treatment to pursue his dream of being a punter in football. First of all, punter is one of two positions in football that could be done by. Okay, man, Judy was a place kicker. Three year old man. So he was doing uh, a ninety foot, uh, oh, sorry, ninety okay. yard punt. He reveals just, more information. Read, just read your comics, okay? Your read your comics, man. Have had the augmentation. Got no time for it. Got no time for it. Mutants. Okay, they kind of never go back to that. That uh, demo fills them in on uh, the fact that the thing wrecked. You know, the untouchable was actually one of the men behind all the augmentations. The people uh, right, the so the the cold cold cold, which is really painful, and get don't it, have to be an expert. You so can actually identify the professionally racist Captain America mask wearers that were ripping up the International House in Wisconsin. A bunch of stuff doesn't pan out, and he, the book doesn't work. But they uh, they decide to go uh, do some further investigating. So. D Man is born. Demolition Dumphy shows up with his superhero costume, and uh, Cap is not totally on board with it. But uh, the guy he already shaved off his mohawk, so he has anointed himself D Man. He's going with it. Uh, they go to the back to the government thing that's not going to pay off for this entire storyline, but they keep just planting the seed. Classic Gruenwald letting you know that there's going to be another storyline to pick up right after this. So if you're interested in tax evasion, then uh, you're going to love issue 332 coming up. Uh, They find the name Dr. Carl Malice from some West Coast Avengers intel off panel as happens. And uh, I love the fact that that D-Man is so upfront about how his costume is based on Daredevil's old one. 
which if you think of it, is a pretty good move because Daredevil will never see this and get mad. Huh? Doesn't uh, they point. go in an all night laboratory search. They don't find anything. There's a uh, D-Man fills them in about Super Patriot and the smear campaign and their past run-ins. A few days later, D-Man scouts a place, a place that the power broker might recruit tough guys, which is Howley's Karate Academy. And he gets a business card, which the address is an ice cream shop. So they get a special code, which I love. If you want to get augmented, you got to go to this ice cream shop and get a peanut butter and praline mint sundae with sprinkles. I, I, I've probably heard the word praline a bunch of times. Yeah, in my life. What it was. It's, supposed to make it weird. it's boiled nuts and sugar and then ground up. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what a so was? Steve Rogers goes through this very high tech thing that scans them for weapons, his body fat percentage, and facial recognition. This is the time before they had to wear masks. There's a shadowy Dr. Claw figure there, and he attacks the figure, which turns out to be a dummy, and then big muscly augmented dooms comes in to fight him. <laughs> Their names are Bludgeon and Mangler. But they refer to each other as Chum and Old Bean, mm-hmm. like their 1920s roustabouts. Yeah, I, uh, of course I enjoy. Cap gets trank darted. D Man, he's gone. He's been waiting outside for 15 minutes. He storms it in and he mixes it up with the Bruise Brothers, another classic uh, name nickname anointing that I really enjoyed. Cap is in the augmented machine. They detect his genes have had some treatment before. And then the building is kept compromised. Everyone has to evacuate. Announcement comes on and they leave as D-Man busts in with Cap shield. He finds Dr. Malice who admits he was augmenting Cap to make his muscles explode. And then the gears start turning in his head with a boost of strength. He could defeat Super Patriot if he keeps the augmentations after he gets free. Cap decides against it. And then the order to bring Captain America in is given in in Washington, D.C. We're going on to issue 329. I did enjoy this one. I felt like the the whole arc drags a little in parts. But the first first two set the stage pretty good. So that's my feedback for 328, everyone. See you in a few minutes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think the, I think the next part, the three twenty nine, that's where it drags a little bit because it may- mostly just takes place in that lab. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's it's a battle story. It's about Cap and and it's about Cap's existential crisis, which is, do I get the extra muscles? You know, mm-hmm. do I want to? And um, this is is this where he uh, meets the power broker? Do, do they go to the mansion? Ah, uh, no. Way- no. No, not yet, because you know they they take a Maoist prisoner, and then the power broker oh, yeah. and show up, and yeah, you know, like Cap taking them out. Uh, and then the yeah, the guys come and they get trapped in that boiler room or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, and oh, that's where they go down into the sewers. Yes, and they fight the. That's where we see the night shift. Well, yeah, they 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 show up in the next issue, but yeah, yeah. Really not? Th- How many issues are we in? We're we've already done two. Oh, we, the, we did four issues, right? Or we did we do five? Five, five. In the house or outside? No, I'm saying stick this out the whole Okay, well the window's closed, so we don't have to worry about the squirrel getting in then. Yes. Yeah, so the the <laughs> squirrel was testing whether or not we had a window here. So good yeah. thing I closed the window today. Otherwise, I'd have a squirrel in the house today. That would be nuts. Yeah, well, he's trying to figure out if he can get in. Sees you eating rice. He's like, I'd like some rice. And, you know, don't feed the squirrel rice, Tristan. No, but it's your rice. Eat the dang rice. And we don't want the squirrel thinking this is a place you can get a handout. Don't trust squirrels, man. That's. Okay, well, you can go over there and say hi to him through the window. Don't open the window because he'll be in the house in five seconds. And then we got squirrels. But yeah, no, three, yeah, 329 is like such a bottle up issue, but it's like, 
yeah, no, remember Cap and Malice get stuck in that boiler room, and then like when D-Man comes back, he gets taken hostage by the broker's men. Yeah. And then, you know, they're like, oh, well, I guess the only way out is into the sewers, and the, so when Cap and Malice get in the sewers, you know, that's when they get attacked by the freaks. Yep. Uh, the freaks. Yeah. Well, 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 the, well, the rejects that the augmentation did not uh, go successfully. Which, again, why are you just tossing them into the... It doesn't make any sense. First off, dude, okay, you had, and here's the th- here's what's weird about it is like you have them sign paperwork to say, hey, it's okay for us to experiment on you, right? But don't have anything for when the experiment goes horribly, horribly awry. Because this doesn't have to be a below the boards kind of situation. Just have to say, no, he understood the risks. We explained the risks to him, said that this is an experimental procedure to grant superhumanity. And um, now, of course, it's not FDA approved, so you'd probably have to do it in like Haiti or something, you know, or Guatemala or somewhere. You had to go to some place where there's a more understanding government about these kinds of things. Well, Charlie, it, it is. You remember Marvel, the 70s and 80s. Remember, you came up with this theory. Have we tried killing them yet? <laughs> well, oh, and as we know, there really isn't an OSHA in Marvel. Exactly. There's not no shit. So it's entirely possible that like a lot of I get the feeling there's like this whole whole thing that if you went to the Marvel Universe and found that that um Upton Sinclair never wrote the jungle. Mm-hmm. And that's like the big turning point. It's like, oh no, no one ever it's like, wait, OSHA? FDA? What what are these things? It's like, no, no one ever thought of that. Even like they had a new deal, but no one ever thought, oh, shouldn't we make sure that food isn't made out of, you know, hockey pucks and um you know, dead babies? It's like, no, why? If you want to eat dead babies, that's the market will decide. Well, I guess, I mean, they can't get sued, but is it just like, oh, but if we keep them, we got to feed them, and, you know, they're like... Well, or you you just, you actually, really, literally, you don't have to put them in the sewers. You just say, yeah, okay, dude, you, you're you not... You're one of the unlucky 50%. Sorry, dude. Doors that way. I mean, it, I mean, like, I, it seems like they just treat them like toxic waste. They dump them, and then if someone finds it, they're like, oh, that's not ours. Yeah, well, I guess because there's apparently some kind of like loss of mental stability mm-hmm. when you undergo the treatment. Although I gotta imagine there's probably gotta be some mutant who's like still like, no, dude, I live at you know 432 Elm, and or like they they wouldn't say in the sewer, they'd like, go to 432 Elm. It's like because it's like I have a memory. This is where I live, man. <laughs> you just have all these mutants crawling out of the sewers all the time. So I don't. I don't get how they're going into the sewers, how they're staying in the sewers per se, but I guess maybe that's just that was just the best idea. Although obviously Malice was against it from the start, he said if they fail, let's make their muscles explode. Oh yeah, he really wants to see the muscles explode. Yeah, he wants to prop them. They're evil. I don't know. I mean, Malice and them are evil. I don't know why he did. They just didn't kill them. I don't. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a very weird idea. You know, well, I guess, you know, well, you, the power broker, you know, the power broker, he's like, look, I'm evil, but I just don't want to kill the, I guess it's like, oh, what, waste all those bullets? Or do you think maybe could they have not been formed right away? Could it have like set in af- a little after at a t- time or something? Well, but then why do they all wind, wind up in the sewers underneath? Well, I think oh. I think Malice even said, oh, yeah, we dumped them in the sewer. I thought he said at one point. Yeah, and although <laughs> what's funny is that actually, I mean, in yeah, the that- thing, which I could not get on my Marvel Unlimited, you actually see that there are far more mutated mutates that are kept in cages oh. that uh, Sharon Venture sees. I mean, yeah, they can't get sued. I'm, I'm sure they're signing waivers and stuff, but maybe it's just a thing that they don't want word to get out that they have all these failures. So, like, the government or somebody, does, somebody doesn't step in and be like, "You can't," you know. But that's the thing. They're working with the government. Clearly, fifty percent of the government's people must have failed too. Well, unless they're not. Yeah, but again, you I mean I guess they don't want the uh, other fifty percent of the government looking into this, me, <laughs> or they yeah. don't want, or they don't want all this public outcry where the government's like, "Oh, sorry, I know, I know, we've been playing ball with you, but we got to step in." <laughs> Our bad, our bad. Yeah. Well, you know, but that's the thing is, and that it's like immediately when you get when you realize that because I think this is where the lieutenant shows up. This issue, no, it was last issue, but still, it's like clearly this is going to be Del Rusk. You know, 
it's like clearly this is a government thing, and we're going to see that in the next issue. Yeah, we're like, oh, GI Max, absolutely, you know, and um, but uh, yeah, so we go into the sewers. Well, and- here, here. Let, let's do three two nine before we get to three thirty. Uh, okay. Oh. Ah. oh. A match order. Okay, 329, Captain America. Uh, great cover to live and die under LA. You see Cap fighting some sewer zombie looking guys, which, if you've read the past couple issues, probably kind of curious about what happens. I was too. We don't really find out until the last panel of the last page. So, this is where the storyline kind of takes a dip for me. I mean, they're building. We pick up where we left off from the last issue, except the Cap is now dressed in his costume when he was just Steve Rogers before. It'll happen again later, but for D-Man. Uh, D-Man breaks through a big, heavy door, finds a disappointing boiler room, <laughs> decides he wants to go get some donuts and coffee to recharge. Uh, Dr. Malice tries to order some tea. D-Man tells him to shut up. And so we learned about a semi-plot hole in the last issue, how... The reason that Cap went to the wrestling gym is because Super Patriot's fighting style is what what maybe tipped him off that he would have trained at this gym in L.A. I don't know what it was about his fighting style. Maybe the fact that he didn't land a punch in 27 minutes <laughs> and wrestling isn't real. <laughs> maybe he stomped his foot every time he threw a punch. I don't know. And then you see a couple of UCFW is real. The thing insured of that. Taking in the damage. He kept trying to hit him with a ladder. Into action, fending off their physical and verbal. He calls them flag face attacks. Uh, FBI agents are going to Avengers Mansion, pretty oh, yeah. easily bypassing it with the security with a card. It's because of the FBI. The the, the Avengers and, trust them. Cap fights way more goons as Demon <laughs> finishes his donut run and outsmarts a guard with a huge truck, saying that the D stands for delivery man. And then he gets in the truck and back through the front of the ice cream shop facade. I really got to say that henchmen should really have cap, like their high school. And, uh, well, High school they diplomas, and I think they really need to be a higher bar right. set for henchmen. Yeah, the goons try to use gas to get Cap and Dr. Mallard, Malice, so he finds a sewer, but that's where all the failed augmentation experiments are. Quote, brain dead and prone to violence. And we see the security at Avengers Mansion was working because the shadowy feds are all wrapped up in non-quantum metallic tentacles where they've been for a while until Captain Marvel, not Miss Marvel, she says, shows up. They check her ID and uh, let them go, promising to pass the message that they're looking for Captain America because of a matter of national security. And meanwhile, we see D-Man has been taken by the goons, demasked and identified as augmentation number 15 by the boss, and taken to a more secure facility. Then in the sewers, the failed experiments emerge, and Dr. Malice tries to escape as they defend, descend on Cap, justifying the cover. All right, so I like, all right, I liked it. I, you know what? This is just a little fresh in my mind. I felt that the story... The whole thing may, may be an issue or two too long, but there's a whole issue that has a big chunk of recapping in the beginning. This was not bad. You get an ice cream shop fight. You get zombies at the end. It's a good cover. We're going. It's good. It's, it's good. All right. That's it for this issue. Thank you, Kona. Uh, so, yes. On the Captain America 330. Okay. Demolition Man cracks up. Uh, so where are we with this? So well, you got Cap still fighting the, the, the rejects in the sewer. Malice th- figures this is his chance to get away from Cap. And he's like, I hear a howling. But he, he figures it must just be the wind. But he runs. So he runs toward it and, and away from the uh, freaks and runs uh, straight into a werewolf. Yeah, Werewolf at Night, and this is the, uh, this is, for those who don't know, this is actually our classic um, Jack Russell. This is Jack Russell, the Terrier. Um, Jack Russell, the Terrier. Uh, our, uh, 
or werewolf by night. This is when he had the more wolf-like form. Yes. Because he, they decided they needed a more wolf-like form, uh, probably related to the popularity of American Werewolf in London. They eventually go back to the classic Universal Studios-style werewolf form um, for Jack Russell. Well, I think uh, he, I think he had gone back and forth between being in control of that persona too and not. So I think this, at this point he maybe didn't have he really wasn't yeah. in control of that you know. Oh, Hulk yeah. now. Sometimes he's in control. Sometimes he's not. But you know why I love this 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 issue particularly, Phil? Hmm. Because it's Otto's gang. The night shift, yeah. Because Cap gets surrounded by these, uh, yeah, the rejects, and that's when the uh, yeah night shift shows up. Yeah, the night shift. Who I did not realize. I mean, I guess I assumed they existed before Otto got there, but that they're now just a crew for hire. Now that the Shade, whoever he is, is gone. Um, although I'm really disappointed that the Grimm brothers don't do more fairy tale, didn't do more fairy tale themed gadgets mm -hmm. when they were working with Otto. <laughs> I don't know if that was like a, a, a cost thing. They just didn't have the money or they didn't have the tech to make their fairy tale themed gadgets, but they have all kinds of fairy tale themed gadgets in this. Yep. And then, you know, I, I'm guessing just Otto was like, no, we're not doing that. Um, I will not have my henchmen use fairy tale themed gadgets. Which, you know, in that point when the Brothers Grimm betray him, maybe it's because you were not a good boss, Otto. True. Maybe you needed an HR person in there. Okay, I'm going out on a limb now. Kona, I know you're going to reference this panel where, you know, make way for the Humpties, young young masters of egg foo as they like throwing eggs. Graham, can't you do anything with that? Making inane banter. What are you saying, moth lady? You don't like my bad yolks? Cone, I'm calling it now. You're calling that out. I know you are. Yeah, and that's that's delightful. Although, man, for like five seconds, I thought I was reading a Wonder Woman comic when the with the reference to egg foo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, which actually comes up later with the idea of using mind control as a way to control people, mm -hmm. which Wonder Woman does all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, yep, lasso of truth. Nope. <laughs> you, your mortal will is nothing. Uh, tell me what's going on. So uh, Cap's morally conflicted because this is, you know, Greenwald's morally conflicted Cap. Yeah. Well, uh, like you were saying, you didn't know that all, all of some of these night shift characters were around before. I'm like, I think oh, I haven't read all of them, but I think some of these characters might have been even like from before this, from like that first Spider Woman, you know, Jessica Drew Spider Woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I knew they all existed. I just didn't realize that they were like basically the West Coast coons for hire. And then, like, they really just really, you know, you know, I for, so for example, I know Gypsy Moth yep. definitely premiered in um, Spider Woman. Mm -hmm. um, I think TikTok does to TikTok. TikTok, I'm loving. I, this is like this is actually the first time I've ever I've ever seen TikTok. And the idea that he just sees ten seconds into the future is just amazing. <laughs> it's just like no, I see ten seconds into the future. And I see, like, in, you know, 90% of the 10 seconds, you die in this if you try to do this. So don't do that. Well, you know where he shows up, you know, kind of modern? Uh, a few years ago when Bendis did a Moon Knight run, he had TikTok in there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, you know what I like about him is he reminds me of um, the original Mac, uh, Mastermind Excello. Mm. Who had a very similar power set that eventually Amadeus Cho models himself after before he becomes bronze. So I was really excited because the first time I saw TikTok, I thought, oh, is that Egghead? No, it's not Egghead, it's TikTok. So, but yeah, so That's... yeah, the night, yeah, the night shift helps Cap take down the, uh, the other freaks. And then, you know, the rest of it, the, they all show up and there's the shroud who, uh, there's him and Cap in a cloud of blackness where, you know, no one can overhear them. Yeah. And then I I I totally saw what yeah, Shroud was gonna do. It's like, look, you're gonna have to let Dance Macabre 
do her dance to make you bend you to her well, mm -hmm. but I'll make sure it's cool. And he basically just like puts the shroud in his eyes so he can't see her. Yes. Which is brilliant. And he's like, yeah, I'm totally, totally uh, under my control now. So, yes. Oh, yeah, because the shroud is like, okay, you can act normal, except you just have to obey my orders, okay? You know. <laughs> And don't let the night shift come to harm, okay? Which Cap went in a yes. Like, yes. And then Needle murder, murders a guy. So, though Cap doesn't see that, so. Yeah. Well, well, you know, th then they actually have her bind Malice, who tells them, you know, where the power yeah. broker is at. So, they, yeah, yes. they go to the power broker's mansion in San Fernando Valley. Yes. And oh, my God. You see this? The, yeah, the night shift shows up in hearse, black hearses. Yeah, well, it's. You know, as Megamind told us, you know, you got to, you know, the difference is like, you're a villain, but you're not a super villain because you don't have style. And yes, yeah, so they show up in hearses, and, which, you know, the grave digger, he gets a discount. He's uh, he's a grave digger. So, you know, I'm sad that grave digger doesn't do the fourth wall breaks in this that he does in later when yeah. he does with Otto. So apparently Otto's like, you can do the fourth wall breaks, guy. You guys can't use silly um, no. <laughs> fairy tale themed weapons. <laughs> and it's like, Otto, you're all over the place here. Okay, you gotta <laughs> rein it in. Rein it in, Otto. But uh, man, all my heroes are dying in this. You know, it's like, oh, I kind, I kind of see why Cap really wasn't that that worried about finding D Man now. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, Otto, you're you're really. You had bad managerial skills when it came to the night shift. So, yeah, because yeah, because they storm the gates, they battle the brokers, henchmen, they get them into the house, and they get they get to the power broker's bedroom. Yeah, TikTok he must be quick. His bed. Yes. Well, TikTok. He's telling them, but he can only see ten seconds into the future. Yeah, then like Cap leaps onto the bed, which like lowers into the. It's like, I guess that's like an elevator. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's got a private subway. Why do these supervillains waste this kind of money? And it's just like, man, it's like, you know, you could start a hotline with this thing. That, you know. See, yeah. Well, but you know, for what it's worth, Cap, he's got that depression of frugality. He, a million dollars, he started a whole hotline. You know, <laughs> so it's like, you know, he he knows the value of a dollar and he knows how to use it wisely. Be, because yes, because the power brokers revealed to be Curtis Jackson, formerly of the West Coast Corporation, last seen a hundred issues ago in Captain America two thirty. I mean, there we go. So, which which was discussed on episode forty of the Quantum Zone. Thank you. Well, there you go then. Um, yeah. So the the what was it? The West Coast Syndicate. So yeah. Yeah, because there was an East and West Coast Syndicate. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. no, I know uh, the West the East the Eastern Syndicate. It's called out in. Um, uh, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. Yeah, if you recall, they are there who run Christmas. Is the big Eastern, the big East Coast syndicate runs yeah. Christmas. So, which is why when Teen Titans revealed that uh, Santa Claus is a villain, you shouldn't have been surprised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so, so yeah, like you said, he yeah, the power broker has his own little subway to a, his private lab where they have D Man and Sharon Ventura hooked up. Uh, this is hard. This they're is trying, hard to watch. They're trying well, to see. next next issue is hard to watch, but yeah. this is well they're experimenting with the man to see how you know how much augmentation can a subject take and you know, I guess they're working on sharing to see if they can de augment. Why does Malice want to see people pop? And you know, not for nothing, it's not even gonna be that good of a pop because obviously the heart's gonna pop first. Because long... it's striated muscle. It's going to get augmented. That striated muscle is the one that's going to pop first. And so it's not going to be a big pop. I mean, unless it's like another money-making scheme, it's like, you know, if they can perfect this either torture or killing method and then it could sell that to people or something. Do you really think people want to buy something that will make people pop? Mm, like, I mean, imagine. imagine. The Red Skull would be interested in that. <laughs> I mean, the Red Skull would be interested, but... It, that that's a market of like five, you know, 
And and not for nothing, these are also guys who, like, if they really wanted to make people pop, could make them pop. Well, you then, know? malice is just a sadist. I don't know. I, I don't well, know. exactly. This is this thing. It's like, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, it's like if Dr. Doom wanted you to pop, he'd probably just drop something on you. Yes. It's like, I don't need to make you pop from the inside. That seems like way more work than it's worth. You know, I don't see the, I, I think that Dr. Doom is savvy enough with a dollar to say, I don't need to figure out how to make you pop from the outside in or from the inside out. You know, it's so, no, I mean, I get the idea of, well, you know, we, if we could find out what the maximum level is, then we can say, okay, we can get you up to the maximum before you'll pop. Yes. But after that, you'll pop. But obviously your heart's going to pop first. So it's like, you know. Have we not gotten there already? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Cap comes in and cut, shuts down the machines. Then he goes in the free D-Man and he gets locked in with them. And we and see D-Man's all crazy up, hopped up well, on the steroids. Well, yeah, one of the, uh, well, one of the, two of the scientists came down and yeah, they locked Cap in and they administered stimulant to subject D. PCP, as Lilith told us. Uh -huh. And, um... So, yeah, so Dennis is just running amok. Like. It's that same drug saber given to freaking uh, Super Patriot. Um, Make him hyper aggressive. So hey, yeah. they worked on the Punisher, so why not? So, Cap's um, just dodging, dodging and weaving for like, uh, oh, yeah, half an hour until yeah, Dennis collapses. And yeah, he says he's got a, uh, it's like, you know, pain, hard to breathe. My heart feels like a knife in it. Yeah, well, he's having a heart attack because well, yeah. that striated muscle, it's getting augmented too. It's like, you know. Because mm -hmm. that's the issue is Cap doing CPR on uh, D-Man. I mean, you know, obviously, and this is this weird thing we have to make a point. is like, well, mm -hmm. actually, the bones and the tendons are likewise being augmented in these oh, moments. Because yeah. otherwise, you know, you would just moving would crush you. Um, which is, you know, which is one of the things I didn't like about the mutates, that they're not like, like, really, if you're having a mutate that's having a problem with it, it's probably going to be, oh, your bones didn't augment with your muscles. I, I just wonder if, yeah, if that's some part of the, uh, if that thing they don't have down with the technique is uh, it's like, yeah, we can augment your muscles, but we have to figure out how to, like, augment your organs and your bones and everything at the same rate, yeah. so... And your brain, and actually, I guess okay, that's okay. what happens with 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 those mutates. It's like their brain can't handle all of the extra nerve nerve stimuli coming from the muscles. Or, I mean, I mean, I think the the, the freaks part of that was like their bodies. Some of them got deformed. I wonder if like the ins their, your brain kind of gets the physically gets deformed inside your skull too, maybe. Well, yeah. I mean, if you have that, if you have that super bone structure, maybe the brain is the skull is pushing it on the brain in that situation yeah. get a pinhead effect you know uh it's it's not cool all right none of it's is, cool phil none yeah. of it's cool before we get to the last issue let's hear what matt had to say about this one. issue 330 here we go the cover demolition man cracks up is a drastic step down from the previous issue but hopefully not as misleading oh. And it looks as if it would be more on the cover, uh, more at home on the cover of an issue of What The. But there's a, there's a great early quote by Cap in this where he says, there's an art to fighting hordes of mentally disadvantaged brutes. Yes, there is. In fact, that art of fighting hordes of mentally disadvantaged brutes has been happening in comments, sections of YouTube videos and on Facebook for many, many years, but this is physical. So Dr. Malice is separated from Cap as he's fighting all these failed augmentation experiments, hoping not to be recognized. He hears scary sounds, he chalks it up to the wind, even though there's super deep underground where no wind can blow. And then he encounters a giant werewolf type creature. It is not Michael J. Fox or Jason Bateman. Then a strange faction of costumed people come like up. Two years later, controls the night shift, not to be confused with the Henry Winkler and Michael Keaton movie about running a brothel out of a mortuary. Uh, this is a, we learn a lot of names and strange features of this motley crew 
which is led by the Shroud. And uh, one of them attacks the augmented failures with an acid meringue pie featuring blackbirds. What? Maybe there was some acid dropped when writing this. I don't know how big a hippie Bruinwald was. But Grim, Grim's fairy tales. So Come on. their attack puzzles Cap as they make wise cracks. See, he doesn't know because you know, Otto didn't let him use those things. Tattered a million. Those uneducated boss things. Oh, I love Tattered a million. Made. By the way, that's like, that is the person who I who doesn't get enough in this is Tattered a million. You don't see that much of. He actually has a cool backstory where he's like a guy from the 30s too. Yeah, kind of. He's a huge social He's like an anarchist. He's crazy. They talk about He's fun. being confused about what Cap is doing there. Their orders were to just subdue the augmented experimentations. Cap looks for malice. He finds a wolf man. Uh, not to be confused with Cap Wolf. That'll come at the end of the world's run. And the augmentation zombies are fought. Malice hides behind the shroud in TikTok. The shroud makes some soundproof darkness. And tells Cap he's basically working at a cover, leading a band of criminals to fight other criminals. And and then he gets the lockdown, um, gets the lowdown from about Malice from Cap and asks if he can beat him up a little so his street red is not blown. So he wants this, uh, this vigilante criminal group to think that he just made darkness around Captain America, beat him up a little bit, and he's going to be bent to their will. All right, <laughs> but first, he has to be subjected to a devotion dance from dancing, spelled like, sort of like Ted Danson, but with an E, not an O, not like dancing, as in dancing, dance to the music, whatever. Uh, it promises he won't, the dance won't actually affect Cap because he installed some darkness in front of his eyes and to act as he normally would, but to never let any harm befall the night shift. She does the dance to Dr. Malice, and then he spills the beans on the experiments. That actually works for him. They raid the lab. There's the Mr. Sinister lookalike guy that throws eggs. He makes a weird star contraption out of magic. I don't remember what they really do with that. And then they take out this very regular-looking rent a cop type guard. There's some slightly more augmented-looking guards come in. They fight. Eggs are thrown, of course, and then they make their way into the house by joining hands, making a chain of darkness. So they kind of. Now, ironically, Humpty dark. Dumpty Welcome isn't actually a Grimm's fairy tale. That's Lewis Carroll. So, so basically, under the that road, makes no sense road. when you think about it. Cap finds the elusive power breaker, identifies them as Curtis Jackson from the West Coast Corporation, a cartel of evil businessmen. Uh, another fitting thing to present day life. There's probably a lot of West Coast corporations out there today. Uh, this guy's so rich, he has his own subway tunnel. Captain Man's to be taken to D Man. He it, it finds D Man in a similar device that Demolition Dunphy saved him from, but he's not alone. Another great cap quote It's D Man and some woman, which is pretty funny. She looks like she's wearing an upside down Wonder Woman costume with long sleeves. D-Man has now bullied his eyes of a Leafield's drone M is the opposite of w. Cap and breaks out with some augmentation rage. They fight. Cap eludes him until he's worn out. Then his body starts failing and Cap administers CPR justifying the cover. And that's it. It's going to get concluded. One more wrap-up. Right. She's kind of curious. Does this predate um, Bane. Bane, yes, yeah. Bane doesn't show up till ninety two. So yeah, this this way. Yeah, because you you realize that like that whole hose pumping the goop into D Man. Yeah, it's a very similar like image to that stuff pumping the muscles into. Yeah, Bane. So. Except except Bane, it goes right into his head. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, Bane. Yeah, Bane's not. You know, yeah. dumb and crazy, but he's the lucky fifty percent. You know, oh, yeah. most people get shot up with venom, actually have a bad time. But he's like the one guy that can handle this stuff. Having a good time, yes. So yes, yeah, he's like he's he's the cat. He's the villainous Captain America. Is Bane. Mm -hmm. All right, final issue, Captain America three thirty one. GI Max. That's right. <laughs>
Oh, I miss, I'm 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 like so mad that GI Max ends poorly. Write the story. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, spoilers, guys, for a book from 30 years ago. No, I yes. know, I know, I know. Um, but I mean, you know, I'm I'm sorry, I, but no, GI Max was cool. I think he was written he as had I, no. M- they even kind of call it out here. I think he was kind of like a bargain basement nuke in a, you know, once they bring nuke back, it's just like, well, why do we need GI max? Well, first off, why, why do you keep on bringing poor nuke back? Let the man die. I know. Let the man die. Let the man deal with his universal judgment. However he has to trust me. Dave will be kind to him. That's his name. Secret Don't War. ever say the other thing. Charlie Esther's been putting that Marvel Unlimited to good use. Secret Wars 2. Secret Wars 2. <laughs> Number six. But yeah, this whole thing starts with, uh, yeah, Cap's like recapping the last couple of issues in his head while he's giving D-Man CPR, but then uh, Shroud, and, Shroud and the Night Shift show up and they call an ambulance. Can I just say I like how annoying the entire... <laughs> Recap first half of the issue is in this. Well, you know, back in, so, back in this day, I've you know, you know, I know, and and for as much as I love Shooter, this is Shooter. This is like every comic book is someone's first. Yeah. So make sure when they come in, they know what's going on. And remember, back in this day, a lot of people are. I mean, were there specialty stores? But I mean, most people were probably getting them off the rack, and you know. You know, on the newsstand, you there was no guarantee you were going to get the next issue. I and and I know that personally, you know, from my own life. That's why I started my love of the thing with Rocky with the final issue of Rocky Ben Grimm's Space Ranger, <laughs> bought at the Lawson's up the street from my house. Um, Lawson's Hill, man, best place to ride your bike. Mm-hmm. But um, man, that's a memory that's stuck in there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just, here's the thing. Like when I read that last issue of Rocky Man Grimm Space Ranger, I didn't get all this exposition. Grunewald is milking the exposition so that he doesn't have to write as many panels. I'm going to say it. I'm going to be honest about it. Some people are exploiting the exposition that that good man, Jim Shooter, asked them to do. And is making it problematic. I think what should have ended last issue and making it go into another issue. Just so they can get that filthy, filthy lucre. (laughs) Which, because you don't get paid anything as a comic book artist and a writer, I understand why they did. But at the same time, it's like, come on, dudes. Come on. Oh, then we get, uh, yeah, Sharon. (laughs) Sharon Ventura's loose and not having a good reaction. Uh oh man. Oh gosh. This is one of those So 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 they just This is one of those difficult issues. Yeah, I mean in this issue they they only have her they only have it like say she was attacked, but I mean I don't know if they ever came out and say said it, but I mean she was Okay, getting no, right? they never said it, but there are but it's tells... heavily implied, right? Well, you'll notice the tattered nature of her costume. Yeah, like the bottom, the bottom. And speci- yeah, because if you yeah. see her original costume, it's a onesie. Yeah, it's like a it's not a thing. onesie. And that is very problematic. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, not not problematic because this is an issue we have to talk about, and is an issue that is real, but. The 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 reality we have to acknowledge in this moment is that yes, that's what happened. That's I mean, the reality. Because that's what I was going to say. This is another example of like malice and the power broker are sadists. They're not good people. I am no. so. This reminds me of how much now I'm mad at Jessica Jones for trying to imply malice was anything else. Exactly. Than who he was. And and the thing is, it's all there in Jessica Jones, who Malice was. Oh yeah. In the way he treats Jessica's mom, uh, who's got it going on. Um, because I think I th- yeah, because that's what I think. It's like in Jessica Jones, they made Malice's evil much more subtle. 
you know. Well, they do because they want to make it say, hey, this is a guy who actually could get through grad school, mm. you know. But really, is it that hard to get through grad school? Yes. They don't care if you're they don't care if you're evil, they care if you're sloppy. You know, that is the the that's that's a great line from Epic Rap Battles of History, uh Jack the Ripper versus um uh Hannibal Lecter. It's a great line where in their rap battle, you know, Hannibal Lecter says, I don't care that you're evil, I hate that you're sloppy. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth of grad school, is they don't care that you're evil. But they do hate if you're sloppy. Mm -hmm. And this is a evil Malice who is not sloppy. Our um, Malice in Jessica Jones is probably probably a bit more sloppy. I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, and he wants... And that's the thing. I think you actually take away from a character when you want them to be... When you want them to be liked. Yeah. Hitler didn't want to be liked. Hitler wanted to be the Aryan Superman. And, you know, his followers were willing to deal with that, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, you can say in reality, among dumber people, like, you know, other politicians, they do want to be liked as well, but they're not going to be. And what makes you a truly evil threat is when you accept that, I'm not going to be liked because of what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is, but, but that's the malice we get here. Yeah. He is not going to be liked and he doesn't care. He's got what he's doing. You know, he's no Otto Octavius. <laughs> we can say that for sure. You know, he's evil. He's wearing his sunglasses indoors. Come on. Mm. Is he wearing sunglasses? Oh, by the way, can I just say I mean, look pretty how dark. weird it is that they recolored him as a blonde? Who? Malice? Malice. I think it was last issue they recolored him as a blonde. Maybe. There might have been one. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, he's got dark hair and dark glasses here. So it was the issue before this. They recolored him as a blonde. and At least in the Marvel Unlimited version. Okay. Um, see, Phil has the hard copies. I don't even know what Marvel wants me to know. So, um, that's, that's the problems with Marvel Unlimited. I mean, I could go and find all my original issues from the old days, but, you know, yeah. this isn't even among them because it's, it's mostly G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. But, um, man, that's an investment that never pays off because, you know, G.I. Joe, that's was known by Marvel. So, it's like, even when Larry Hammond went and did whatever else he did, it's like, you know. Yeah. <sighs> The universes, but so. yeah, no, they they color him as blonde in the in the issue previous. So, mm. um, but but yeah, so yeah, like I said, Sharon freaks out. Captain America tries to like calm her down, gives her the shrouds cape, and, like, and he worry. does, he does, yeah. for what it's worth, you know. He even and he almost immediately like trusts her, which is like. I don't know if that's because Cap is just like the ultimate judge of character, and to be fair, he's right. Well, too, I mean, she was locked up in the in this lab, so it's like you know you're 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 obviously an enemy of the power broker. So that that well, no, but later he like puts point. her. Let me put it this way: later he puts her in charge of watching them. Yes, and it's like, oh wow, she could really like just snap his neck if she wanted to right now. Yeah, you know. Now in an issue. Actually, I might have it, but in when she drops off Sharon Venter at Captain America, you know, she has to ride. First off, I don't know why, because he has a van. Oh, that fantastic. That he makes her yeah. ride on the motorcycle. And she's like really uncomfortable riding on the back of his motorcycle. Yeah. It's like, why didn't you just drive the van back, dude? Yeah. I mean, really, yeah. just sat in the passenger seat and listened to the tunes, put a foot up on the dashboard. I mean, Are you going to make a ride on the back of your motorcycle? All the that, way was, to, that was the Fantastic Four book, so unless the writer didn't know about the van, I don't know. Uh, it's possible. That was burnt. Well, no, that wasn't burnt. No, that wasn't burnt. That was someone else. No, that was like, um, was like 307 or so. It was like, yeah. yeah. Like, no, I remember that issue because there's a whole thing about, because that's where I first found out about this, and this is where we get it, and we actually see the tattered costume with the tattering where the tattering shouldn't be. Yes. And and I get the idea that there's a lot of comics coterie in this. 
mm-hmm. where there's it's definitely tattered, but kind of like implied that no, that's just layer one. There's three other layers. Under- well, yeah, there's like coloring, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they gotta make it work. I mean, they gotta yeah. make it work. It's still a kid's book, but they want to talk about a very real problem. Yes. And that's sort of the problem they're dealing with in yeah. this story. It's like, boy, these are very real problems. Oh, and there's a comics code. Mm. Uh. But yeah, that was not a symbol Diamond should have chosen. But yes, yeah. that's a whole other bag of hammers. But yeah, so yeah, once Sharon's calmed down, Cap, Cap, I guess they're waiting for the ambulance, but they try to de augment the man down to where he was before to take some of the strain off his heart. Well, they, yeah, they, they well, the two doctors that are there actually deal with him. They don't really say they de augment him, but they do say that they at least bring it down they, a little bit. Well, no, what they say is okay, he's fine. He's basically at his basic level. That basically. They've stabilized him. He's worn himself down. They don't really suggest that they've done a de-augmentation process because as we see, the de-augmentation process doesn't work Mm -hmm. because Ms. Marvel, as we know, is fully augmented after being under the uh, de-augmentation lights as long as as D-Man, longer than D-Man was, arguably. Yes. And so she is... So there is no deaugmentation process. You can't, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Even though repeatedly throughout history, someone will find a way to undo the super soldier serum and cap and turn him back into, you know, scrawny Steve Rogers. Which, sure, why not? You know, <laughs> sure, why not? It's comic books. You know, it's yeah. At a certain point, you got to be willing to say, you know what, I know you guys don't care about continuity, you writers, and I know you don't care about whether or not it makes sense scientifically story-wise, but okay, it's comic books. You're going to do what you're going to do. We're going to read them. It's fine. We have this love-hate relationship with you. Um, And life continues. But yeah, so then they call an ambulance, and the power broker's thinking, hmm, my, uh, my ace in the hole showing up at eight o'clock and Shroud, shroud's kind of like, yeah, the authorities are on their way. Me, me and my guys are wanted by the law. So if you have things uh, uh, under control here, Cap, I think we're just going to slink off into the night. And then Cap is still getting this moral ambiguity. It's like, I don't know. I, I don't know this Cap. I'm going to be honest with you. Mm. This is not the Cap that I, I, it's sort of like this point where I'm like, I'm kind of glad I skipped these issues mm-hmm. because I like I catch up when he is captain, the captain. Yeah. But it's like these issues like so existentially like, I don't know. They have warrants. It's like, dude, you know, sometimes the letter of the law isn't the important thing. Well, I don't know if two these people all- help you. I don't know if Grunwald was trying to show this one extreme because then once he becomes the captain, it's just like, you know, do I follow the letter of the law? Can I follow the letter of the law? You know, now that I'm not captain. No, you can't like cap. You no. can't follow the letter yeah. of the law. I think, you have I to think, follow the spirit yeah. of the law. I think that's why. You I have it. to control by consent. Yeah. This is an interesting term I've recently learned, which is an idea they have over with the Bobbies in England. Which is this idea that, yes, you know, you have to control, but you have to, you can't control through the letter of the law. You have to control through consent of the governed. You have to work with your community to understand the right way to work things. Now, in its own case, that does lead to its own corruption because then it's like, well, the community works better when we let the kingpin do his thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's it's there's problems with everything, but yeah. But hey, GI Max. Oh yeah, the army helicopter shows up, Lieutenant Michael Lynch, and that's when Sharon Ventura comes out and you know, screaming, Michael, you betrayed me and yeah. that's when all these soldiers try to tackle her and Cap's like trying to like throw them off her and he's like like this is crazy. Then he pulls everyone back in the house and Sharon's telling Cap about, you know, uh 
the whole thing about meeting Lynch and how he set her up and everything to be captured by and everything with the power broker. Uh, yeah, that's when G.I. Max pops out. Yeah, G.I. Max. Yeah, Max, who dies because the freaking boat ricochets and it's his karate and I know one nothing you can do. One bullet. It's, yeah, it's yeah, which is kind of like oh wait, which again goes into this idea. Give the guy freaking battle armor. Seriously, it's like he doesn't have bulletproof skin. You know that you did the tests. I mean, he's basically this fighting in a tank. Top. He's basically fighting in a tank top. I know. It's like, what are you thinking? Again, you're bad at your job, Lieutenant. You know you deserve every bit of this honorable discharge you're getting and your time in Leavenworth afterward because you're bad at your job. Mm -hmm. You are not doing right for everything else you're doing. Because, hey, Project Rebirth, it's a thing. We do it. We experiment on people. Fine. But you're bad at your job. You know your guy's not bulletproof. You're sending him into a fight with Captain America where people are going to be shooting stuff. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, because Lynch tries to kill Cap and the ricochet. Yeah, kills GI Max, which they say at the end, you know, pronounced dead at the hospital. Lynch. Well, yeah, and but it is just that. And again, why are you shooting Cap? He's gonna rat on me to my spirit. <laughs> but you know, it's like. You're going to shoot the guy who's had a billion bullets shot at him I in know. the last 80 years, but and you're going to be the one that gets the shot. I know. I, I know exactly. And Cap's wearing chainmail armor. Plus, plus, he's got a piece of indestructible metal on his arm. Too. <laughs> I know. It's like, in what universe was this a good idea? We don't care that you're evil. We hate that you're sloppy, Michael. Oh, I mean, he's in the middle of a fight. Like, he's going to drop that shield. Come on. Yeah, well, exactly. And, like, he doesn't know you're sitting there with a gun. I'm going to shoot him with my gun. Yes. Okay, Barney. But, yeah, I just Ugh. love the, yeah, the epilogue. Thing. Yeah, G.I. Yeah, Max is dead. Lynch has been reassigned to administrative work. Curtis Jackson was arrested and released on $1 million bail. And he's still in the augmentation business. Uh, D man oh, exactly. listed in stable condition. Just show that the system is corrupt to its core. Yes. And they if say only there was an effort to I don't know, deal with these bad apples and get them out of the cart and maybe defund the organizations that are, you know, yes. allowing people like Del Rusk to uh push it forward. So yeah. But yeah, they so, say yeah. Man. Yeah, Sharon Ventura traveling east. I'm surprised they didn't they do a footnote or anything and be like, yeah, see Fantastic Four. I think it's 307. It's like 307 or 308. I'm surprised there's no footnote there. Well, no. I mean, I because I remember that issue. It was a, it was yeah. a cool issue. Because I loved when the thing and Sharon reconnect. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, the madness of it is, you know, clearly written by, you know, White, what, what, white male nerds. Um, just the whole, oh, I can be with you because you're not really a man. It's like, wow, that's just what I want to hear. You don't have a real uh, body, yeah. No. Well, was, and again, we never know if he's got a rocky I, I pair of rocks, but I, you know. I, I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to say she shouldn't have been on the, his team, but it's just like she should have been in intense therapy, though. Also, well, yes. She, Absolutely, you know, again, so many superheroes. Like if like if Doc Samson wasn't evil, you know, well, Carla Soffin, Doc Samson, are there any superpowered psychiatrists who aren't evil? Psychiatry is evil in the Marvel universe. Well, for what it's worth, that's like the one thing that's good about like Rick and Morty is that the psychiatrist in that she's not a superpowered being. She's like calling you out on your on your BS, and maybe that is exactly what Sharon Ventura, Wanda Maximoff, and everybody else just needed: is someone to talk to them and listen to them and walk them through. And you know, 
freaking Ty Burrell is not the man to do it. He's too up in his own business. So yes, oh, that's the problem we find ourselves at. My favorite epilogue: The Shroud brought the failed augments to the power broker's estate for treatment, as he vowed. The augments have caused ten million dollars in property damage so far. <laughs> the Shroud remains at large. Well, yeah, because you know, well, they at least they have a house to live in, so yeah. good for that. Um. And again, you know, I would love to see a story about a guy who was like a failed augment who eventually like stabilized. Mm. Like, you know, it's like Nucklo. You know, when Nucklo first appeared, he's like this, I'm radioactive and I'm mad and I was a baby and I have no okay. concept of, but like later, like Nucklo's like, no, I got superhuman strength and, you know, and I'm a dude now. It's like Dan Germain. There are probably so many Dan Germains out there. Dan Germain is a guy who fell in a rock saw chemical vat and became super strong and indestructible, but just wanted to go back to a day job, man. He just, yeah. You know, he just wanted to not have to deal with the stress of being a superhuman. Um, All right. So, anyway, yeah. yeah, we are like 15 minutes into the next show already. Oh, so. I know. I know. So, well, I'll play Matt's last feedback, and then Race just sent feedback for the overall arc. So, great. I can't wait well, for Ray. Yes. Okay, issue 331. Big conclusion. Starts, of course, with the giant. Well, let's start with the cover. Strange cover. Cap is teamed up with some woman while a budget Punisher wields guns. And his back is to them. We don't know who this person is. Has it been introduced? We also really don't know who this Okay. Some woman is. Either. Her name but, is Miss uh, Marvel. Do you hear in Ventura? She is central to Marvel Comics Limited. I will not accept that you don't know that. Until the Shroud interrupts him, and they get some medical attention to D-Man, and he gets the woman released. TikTok is giving constant updates about how many seconds away things are going to happen with his trusty stopwatch. He does that a bunch. It's kind of weird. kind of like it. kind of annoyed by it. Uh, so the woman freaks out when she's released. She's in augmented rage. Cap tries to reason with her. He gives her his shield to make her feel safe. She uses it against him, but eventually calms down. They try to reverse the augmentation on D-Man while the feds get mad about the Steve Rogers tax payment government thing uh, not being resolved yet. TikTok continues to report, report way too many details on times, even annoying some of the characters in the book. They're, tra they're, they're about to transport D-Man to a new facility. They call an ambulance. They put his mask back on him just so he won't be recognized, I guess. I uh, a military copter shows up instead of paramedics, and they say they've been having uh, their soldiers augmented but are also investigating the power broker. We don't really know what's going on with that. It seems a little sketchy. Cap starts thinking the same thing. The woman and Cap, they take off. They bring the power breaker with them for insurance. The woman, who officially gets referred to as Ms. Marvel, fills them in on her backstory and the connection between the military and the power broker. Uh, the military sends G.I. Max, a seven-foot-tall, probably 400-pound brute, a handgun and a machine gun with a bayonet after him. And a tank top. Cap thinks about the fact that he's fighting a soldier again for the second time recently. He also did so in a recent Daredevil mission. And then uh, about how the military must have given up on the super soldier serum and they're going with augmentation instead. They fight for a while until Lynch, the leader of this part of the military, Task Force 17, I guess, shoots a gun. It deflects off Cap Shield and into G.I. Max's jugular. Pretty graphic panel with a big pool of blood. And then we see an epilogue, which is pretty much all a bummer. Uh, D-Man is thinking about going back to wrestling. The power broker was arrested, but he posted a million dollars bail, and he's still in the augmentation business. The military is essentially slapped on the wrist. G.I. Max, is, his existence is basically denied by the government. Ed Cap is on his way to Washington to let them know what's really going on with Ms. Marvel coming east with them. And but he has no idea about the uh, tax man getting to, getting to him. And then it teases the next issue, Death America, as we know it, is done. What? Their tax 
and taxes and payments going to get going to be the the is the one that could do the things that that's how they got that's Capone. how they got Al Capone. Yes, yes. Captain you America. Coke. Uh, anyway, it was a yeah, pretty enjoyable storyline. Maybe a little harder for for me to read straight through in this uh, fashion, but. Overall, I, I enjoyed the quips and the ridiculous. What the constant of recaps? The, the yeah. thing, the building. I don't know. It was, it was Get paid well, by the page, you know, Get paid by the page. Into, into uh, one issue less, but hey, you, you, you printed money, selling issues. I understand the commerce of comics. That's it. Thanks for letting me talk so much. If you have played these all, hi Lilith, hi Phil, and uh, I'm Matt Jonah. Have a good one. Everyone knows Matt Kona. You know, you really think about it, you realize that this was maybe the way that the writers and the artists were protesting freaking uh, Jim Shooter at the time. Oh, like, oh, just like we, oh, let's, just, let's, just, let's just do recaps. It's four pages recaps every, every, every issue. Because that was before someone thought, hey, why don't we just put like a quick recap, like a one paragraph recap mm -hmm. at, at the start of every book? So, all right. Uh, so, before we okay. get out here, let, we what's, our, what's our friend from down under have to say? Let's see, Ray. From Let's into see what's the coming out of the pouch. Ah, out of the, from Into the Night and Moon Night podcast. Hey, yeah, Lilith and Phil, this is Ray. I'm dropping in some very early. Um, well, when I say early, I'm recording this uh, way before the release of the show. Uh, some early feedback on Captain America issues 327 to 331. Now, off the bat, I'm just going to say I really did enjoy this. I'm hoping you did too, Lilith. Um, I know, Phil, you probably did, yes. uh, most likely. But, no, I, I, I enjoyed this quite a lot, actually. Um, look, I, I, there's no no secret I'm a bit of a Grunewald fan as well, and, and I find his writing... Um, you, you know, above par on this, similar to his work in Quasar. Uh, the characters were all very interesting. I love the introduction to Dennis Dumphy, um, D-Man. Um, I enjoyed the first issue with Super Patriot. Uh, and what I found really cool is how Captain America is very much like the underdog. Like, I guess, I guess in the movies and stuff, um, and for the most part, he's very self-assured uh, and he's, he's, you know, really just unbeatable. Um, I love how Grunewald set this up, sets this up over the the five issues that he's actually fighting augmented uh, characters, and of course he's come across them before. But um, how he's very much behind the eight ball here, and he has to struggle and and just use his fighting ability more than his actual peak human um, physical condition to beat to beat them. I mean, he doesn't even really beat Super Patriot. But I, I like the introduction of Demolition Man. He's he's great. He's awesome, and I've heard that he's. More recently come back as well. Um, uh, interesting to see where he goes. I absolutely loved the introduction of Night Shift. It brought me back to the Brian Michael Bendis, 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 um, <laughs> Night Run. Uh, and Bill, TikTok, there he is. Told you. Uh, TikTok makes a return. But I love all the characters. Um, the Brothers Grimm, I've only really seen them in the Acts of Vengeance against Cosmic Spidey. Um, I, I want to see more of them because I love this whole magical slash fairy tale aspect of them. Uh, Tata Damalian, um, I read about him in the Marvel Universe. I've actually never seen him in action. It's good to see him there. Uh, we get the Dance Macabre. Um, she was in the in the Moon Knight run uh, with TikTok, so Night Shifter kind of consistent in that in that regard. But also, I think one of my new favorite characters, the Shroud, I love this idea about how he's, and I know it's been alluded to before, but how he's kind of going undercover and he passes himself off as a criminal, but he's actually trying to fight the um, crime from within. That was the original being morning concept. I love his powers. He was, um, he was reversed Thunderbolts. In uh, West Coast Avengers. Um, and I think to the, to the extent... Um, Maybe Daredevil, I can't remember, but uh, very cool characters. Um, yeah, so big props there to, to see TikTok again, and he's just as annoying as he was in the in the Moon Knight run. Uh, yeah, and and um, oh God, there's so many other. Oh yes, of course. Just finally, quickly, beautiful, beautiful uh, references because I only just recently read um, 
around the 300 mark, um, issue 306, I know, of the Fantastic Four in the Epic Collection, um, which actually ties into this with Miss Marvel. So mm-hmm. it was really cool to see her in this because in the Fantastic Four issue, uh, you get a bit of her origin, how she's actually been um, abused. Uh, it's it's alluded to like physically, mentally, and potentially sexually with uh, Malice's uh, henchmen um, while she was captive uh, and, and she was restrained by, uh, oh, actually, oh, it's, uh, it's actually before Jackson, Curtis Jackson. But I guess when she first got her powers, um, she was uh, abused by Malice's henchmen. So that's why she she really hates men. Um, and she's very um, traumatized. And you, and you see that in this um, in, in this run of Captain America. So I love how that kind of tied into what I read before. And also as well, the, the reference to, to Daredevil 233, uh, with Captain America and Nuke, i.e. one of the best stories yep. um, of Born Again um, for Daredevil. Uh, so, uh, again, I'm liking how these kind of linked in. There's a lot more continuity here than there is these days with Marvel, uh, and I really very much appreciate it. Uh, but, yeah, interested. I, I'm interested in um, what's happening to Captain America now. It uh, looks like he's going to face the authorities, and I love how Grunwald has set up that not only the military but the government uh, are up against Captain America now. And finally, at the end, the very last page of 331 I thought was really cool. It's a good way of Grinwell for, for wrapping up a lot of loose ends in this whole arc. So just the, the mug shots of each of the characters, and it's similar to, like, the end of a TV show or a movie where you figure out what happens later. Dragnet. Um, That's the show he's referencing. Like, like a documentary. But really enjoyable. I enjoyed this. Lilith, I hope you enjoyed this because, um, yeah, th- this is this is good stuff. It's she faked the power of failure, Ray. You know, your, your smack bang action. No, it was the armadillos. I know. More. Like, the armadillos and the frogs aren't getting, getting along, unfortunately. But uh, you do get a sense of vulnerability for Captain America here, and I like it. I mean, just that he has to rely on his wiles uh, more than anything else. But anyway going to hear what you guys have to say uh keep it up i'm looking forward to all the other issues cheers thank you ray and i can't believe you didn't mention the one uh night shift character i was sure you were going to bring up uh werewolf by night who was you know what was it werewolf by night 32 is it the first appearance of moon knight i'm surprised you did not bring that up and make that connection they are both tied to the moon which is Kanchu's uh Central power base. And that was New Moon Knight's first appearance in Werewolf by Night's books. So I'm surprised he did not mention that. Slack mm. and Ray. Slack and Ray. All right. So I'm feeling very Mandela's, Mandela'd right now. I don't know. Exactly. All right. Anything yeah. else, Charlie? Yes, sir. Should we get out of here? Should we do another show? Oh, well, we're a half hour into the last show, into the, into the next show. So, yes, let's get out of here. But, um, Hey, do you want to do the promos or would you like me to? I'll do it. I'll do it. All okay. right, everyone. Send your thoughts because next episode and again next week, uh, we're going to be covering that big one, Captain America 332. I think we're going 332 to 336. But I mean, send in your thoughts because we're going to be going all the way to 350. But yeah, next one is the big one, Cap 332. I think everyone knows what that is. Uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail, 614-382. 2737 that's 614 38 capes and remember to follow comic capers on facebook twitter follow all of our social media follow everything all in one convenient place that's linktree l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash capes and lunatics and remember to support our sponsors tweaked audio get yourself some good headphones hunt a killer you know be the hero of your own story and Check out Pod Life the book if you have any kind of interest, passing or great in uh, podcasting. Pick up, please pick up volume one of Pod Life the book because volume two is in the works. So go check, pick up the first volume before volume two comes out. And when you, you know you're going to buy that on Amazon. So when you do, use the Southgate Media Group link right down there in the show notes. Doesn't matter if it's YouTube or the podcast, it's in the show notes. Thank you for the uh, sign language, Charlie Esser. Uh, anyway. So use the link to help support this show, the Southgate Media Group Network, and that absolute madman, Rob, Master Doom, Southgate. I get so much right. Mark my words. Charles Esser. 
Well, if you'd like to write to me in an old-fashioned email way, the way we did in 1986, when these uh, issues first came out, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on the Twitter. This is a live tweet, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I do now, because I can stay up that late, because I'm a grown-up, at Charlie Esser. C-H-A-R-L-I-E. E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. Thank you, Moz. Thank you, Moz. All right. Thank you for joining us, everyone, for this extra long Comic Capers. Again, come back next week as the story, the cap story continues. And hey, big shout out uh, to the Facebook group, uh, Captain America comic book fans. All they discuss is Captain America comics, not even the movies or anything. So if you're a ca- ca- Captain America comic book fan, go join that Facebook group. I like Captain America comics. They're very good. Of course. Captain America is cool. Cap's cool. I'll just give you a new... Uh, but not cool, like, he's, like, cool, like... Like, do the right thing, cool. Yeah, you know, you know, it's, like, do the right thing that's hard, cool. It's, like, you know, make a decision that doesn't necessarily benefit you, but actually benefits humanity, because humans are one thing, and we should all be human. 